Happy Friday. Hello, hello, everybody. Well, I would like to uh, begin by officially um, welcoming back the brains of the operation. Miss B has joined us back from her uh, long well vacation. You no, know, uh, I wouldn't really call that a vacation because you didn't choose that, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. So why don't you talk about being sick? How was that? I slept. <laughs> That's all you did was sleep. Yes, I slept a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I I actually don't really remember getting sick. I I remember several times waking up and you were hovering over me. <laughs> and I thought, um, at one point in time, I remember thinking, are we alive? <laughs> and then I thought, at one point in time, you were shining the grill thermometer at me i was and then it thought, <laughs> um <laughs> yes okay it, so i gotta tell you about the grill thermometer because i thought it was ingenious and inventive i didn't want to wake her up but i wanted to know her temperature <laughs> and so what i did was is i took the <laughs> we have a handheld laser one that you know shoots shoots the temperature so i took my own and then i wrote it down because it was different than 98.6, right? Because it, it's not going to register it. But then when I took yours, I wrote it down, right? And then I just did the math to figure out. Or you just shoot me in the forehead. Yeah, it's right it. in the temple. I was like, I woke up and I'm like, <laughs> just forget it. I not, I don't even want to know what you're doing. <laughs> just, just let me be. Well, and for the record, my <laughs> barbecue grill thermometer method was very close to what the actual thermometer was when you took your temperature a little bit later. Just saying, just saying it was inventive and I didn't have to wake her up. I could do the math, the differences in the numbers, and it was just fine. I was uh, very appreciative that you uh, were there to take care of me. That's right. And all of my apparently <laughs> medicines that came along with it. Yeah. So uh, I got a new nebulizer, mm -hmm. which is something that I had not had in the past. Um, and now you know how to work it. Um, I do. And what to put in it. I do. So now. Hopefully uh, you just don't get sick. Yeah. I don't know uh, what happened. It was just. Uh, uh, you got your butt kicked. I. Yes, I did. No. And I, I, I don't even know. I mean, at first he thought it was influenza and then our SV. RSV. Um, my lung capacity is still not back to but it was but i'm up and about and no temp and mm -hmm. i feel pretty good i'm a little winded from time to time just climbing the stairs i have to like take a breath and um uh just i guess take it easy because it's not i'm just not i'm not 100 percent yet but <coughs> i am better and i'm grateful for you Mm -hmm. And glad that you didn't get sick too. So, yeah, I didn't. <clears throat> Let's get some hellos in, huh? Yes. Hey, Bobby Spags, welcome. Bobby was first in the house. How are you, my friend? Followed by uh, Farm Ranch Homestead and ACM Homestead. How are you guys? The Terminator's in the house. Louise Wesley. Um, by the way, don't ever send your wife shopping with Louise Wesley. That's just, just a, no, Louise. You nope. should, you should encourage that because <laughs> she was like. She's a haggler. She's like, you know, we'll get to that bottom dollar. She's a good girl. Skane's girl. Good evening. Oh, and we're going to ready. Ready? Ready? Jean. Janine. Janine. Jean. I think it's Jean. Jean. <laughs> I looked it up on the internet before the live. I'm like, I got to get that right. The I just internet. don't remember it. I know. One more rock. Good evening to you. She says, I hope B is feeling better. And she is absolutely feeling better. Gizmo, good evening to you. Masio Parrot, hello, hello. City Greens, good evening. Um, who else we got down here? JB, welcome in. Let's see here. Gypsy's in the house. We have royalty. We should all feel very blessed. And uh, I hold him responsible for a lot of the shopping stuff, just for the record. I do. Mid Midwest Ribeye, welcome. Vicky Pullen. Says happy Friday to all our fellow freesteaders and happy anniversary to Private Cluck and my wonderful husband Dan. Happy How cool! Anniversary. Happy anniversary! How many years? Uh, Dorothy Holloway, good evening to you. Eagle Lover Texas is in the house. 
Indiana Mike is here. How are you, my friend? Ahoy back. Jonathan, welcome. LJC says, uh, happy Friday, freedom, family, and friends. Glad to see B's beautiful face again. I know. I'm just excited she combed her hair. I did. I combed it. I know, I right? I put a bread in. Yep. Todd, not Todd. Welcome in, as is the greatest name on the internet. Ha, Bubble Off Club. <laughs> yep. Jules is in the house. Carrie Davis, good evening to you. Matt, hello. Greetings back. The famous American Roots Farm is in the house. How are you, Jess and Joe? Deep South Homestead's in the house. Hello, Danny and Wanda, or Danny and Wanda, or Danny or Wanda. <laughs> but welcome. Al Joe's in the house. Good evening to you. Let's see here. What do we got? Oh, Chuck Peoples is in the house from Homestead Medical. Oh, wonderful. <clears throat> Actually, I, I thought about you a lot today, Chuck, and, and I'll explain it why later on in the live, but um, I met a very interesting um, person that I think you guys could certainly do some collaboration with, but I thought of you instantly. Combat Midwife was exactly who I was talking about. First time in the live. Um, I'm going to talk about Combat Midwife a little bit later uh, in the show. I'm super glad you're here. Who else we got? JB, hello. It says, uh, hey, Wanda, I just watched your butter canning video. You guys, for those of you guys who don't know, and I'm sure all of you guys know who Danny and Wanda are from Deep South, but if you want to learn stuff, that is a great channel to learn. They are super smart. And, and more importantly than that, they're just good, good folk, you know? LJC says, now that you have a nebulizer, it's good to keep some sterile uh, saline and food-grade hydrogen peroxide on hand. Lots of good respiratory junk. Good to know. Oh, good advice. Pack rats in the house says, good to see you, B. Um, Cheryl's in the house. Good evening to you. Oh, look at that. I got it. Jean. See? Look at that. So I Googled Jean, just so you know. Today, we were sitting here and getting ready for the live, and I seen your name pop up um, early on. And I thought, man, I got to get that right. So I just Googled pronuncia pronunciation, spelled the name in French. And I listened to it a couple times, trying to get a beat into you my listened head. listened to it? Yes. Because just trying to memorize. Because, you know, it's not that's not my strength. <laughs> anyway. Um, hey, my good buddy Mo's in the house. Good evening to you, buddy. Um, let me see. Android Homestead, good evening to you. Starla Dope, good evening. Easy, good evening. Joan Kelly says... Uh, I'll say happy Easter now so I don't forget it later. Thank you very much and happy Easter happy back to Easter. you. Let me see here. Oh, my goodness. There's a lot of chit-chatting going on. That's good. Mary Michelle is in the house, and I think I'm caught up. That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, what, what's the first thing you got on yeah. your list today? Well, I did have that I was sick, and I wanted to thank everybody for reaching out um, via the live and personal text messages and phone calls um, and, that, emails. <laughs> and emails. Yes. Um, it, it means a lot to, to know that um, we have a lot of friends out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This world's, you know, <coughs> so superficial. No, but it's so superficial and we've yeah. become so detached from each other with, you know, social media and, you know, all of the things that's going out there, it's really nice to know that there's all those great people out there. And there's people out there that actually just care. They don't want anything from you. You know, they just want to know you're okay. Yeah. You know, and that's just super powerful. And, you know, the only way that's possible is, you know, with the community, it's with being intentional and with making, you know, that effort. Yes. Um, TJ in Georgia says, uh, first of all, good evening, says, ha, love the shirt. If I was a wife, I would get one. Show me your shirt. What do you got? Feral wife life. Yep, this was came in the mail. I'm not uh, <laughs> sure when this was purchased, but I assume it was for me since yeah. it was for you. Since yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be weird if you were wearing it. It would be a little weird if I was wearing it. Yeah, but you are a feral wife. There is no. We'll talk about that some too, huh? Hey, Nitos, good evening to you. Has got my compost piles turned in time to make it, it on here. Good. Yep. Good. 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 Yes, but guys, thank you again for all the warm wishes and all of that. And um, I had a lot of people calling me. I had people who dropped me off food so I could eat while we were taking care of B because I'm just not a cook. Which is so wonderful. Yeah, and easy. Yeah. You know, um, and that was just super nice. We had people show up and help do chores. And I kept saying, guys, I got this. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. And, of course, being the freedom-minded, um, self-reliant mentality, nobody listens. <laughs> You know, thank goodness. Yeah, right. Thank goodness. Right. Um, but it was super, super nice. Yeah. Yeah. I came downstairs after three days of basically sleeping 
and was just like, what happened to the house? Like who has been here and why does it look like this? <laughs> but, and I realized that, um, uh, things just keep happening. So, uh, just because one person gets sick does not mean that anything else stops. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I'm super appreciative of all of your, your help. Yeah. Well, it was hard to get it all. Cause I had to run the businesses that I run. I had to run the homestead. I had to make sure she had her medicine when she was supposed to have her medicine. Right. You know, I had to make sure that we were eating. I had to make sure that all of those things were going on. And so things kind of fell apart. I tried to pick up the house as I went along a little bit, um, but there, I just couldn't get to all of it. There's just not enough hours in the day. Well, and then there, like the medicines were like, I, I went back through the paperwork that the doctor had sent home with you. And it, there was a lot to it. I mean, a lot of it was, was um, uh, upkeep in the first place, you know, vitamins and minerals mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um just getting it all in and you're not used to that. And then these new things and then the ones that tasted really bad and then trying to keep them down. And then it was, uh, you know, getting sick is just sucks. Yeah. And when you're not used to taking a bunch of stuff, um, it's hard to get them all in and then knowing like what you take with what and what you're not supposed to take with others. And well, let's talk about the doctor real quick a little bit, because we went, I took B um, into, now you guys know we have our own kind of medical system here called direct care. And so we don't take insurance or any of those things. And so we went to it and it's really neat when you walk in the door, I think I talked to maybe about this in the last slide, but there's a big sign that says common sense medicine you know, right on the front door. And, and she walked into the lobby. Our doctor walked right out, sat down, listened to her heart or your lungs, probably not your heart. Right. I think he was probably doing both, doing both, whatever. Um, but it was quick in and out. B was in and out of there in 10 minutes, start to finish the whole thing, came back home. Well, and he was like, you know, how do you feel? You need a, you know, anti nausea. And it's like, well, I didn't think I did, but when I try to take something, <laughs> I can't keep it down. So then he's like, okay, we'll get you that. And then yeah. it's like, you know, like, what do you need <laughs> right. now? And then yeah. he's like, okay, well, here's some probiotics too, because if I'm going to give you an antibiotic, I need to get you some probiotics. And then yeah. it's like, um, which you, we should be taking these things already, but um, life happens and then you run out and then it's easy to not do it because um, other things happen. And yeah. so, um, we should be taking care of ourselves in the first place, the preventative cares, the vitamins, the eating good, the drinking your water, the getting the sleep. Mm -hmm. um, don't get yourself run down um, in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, that's all, you know, common sense. But mm -hmm. when you're in the rat race, it's hard to remember to take care of yourself. Yeah. And until it's, um, until you have to take care of yourself and or else. And so. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. KY Goatman. Um, good evening to you as uh, love runs rampant. Good evening to you. LJC says that if tag wore B's little shirt, we'd have to call him Smedium. Wears a small, but needs a medium. <laughs> Smedium. That, that's really, really, really fun. <laughs> Had a hard time finding the live, got the notification, but it didn't show up under my subscriptions or even when I searched for it, finally found it on the channel page. Yeah, I have people tell me all the time, KY Goldman, that they've been unsubscribed and that all the time. I don't know how to do anything about it, so I don't worry about it, but just kind of how it works, you know? Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Hey, Wes, good evening to you. Let me see here. It says, I got good news today. I got a call from Union Hall to start on a job site in Emporia on Monday. Good job. Yep. I'm not a fan of union or the politics, but it's great pay and benefits. Yep. Let's see here. Let me see here. I agree. B being sick sucks. I had a few uh, weeks of a few weeks of weakness and had two units of blood. Mm. Um, are you feeling better now? I hope so. Yeah. Um, let me hope see so. here. Probiotics also need prebiotic to feed the good stuff. Yep. Skeins girl says mint tea is also good for nausea. Yes. Yeah. 
just mint. Yeah, KY Goldman says I was still subscribed. Yeah, I don't know how it works. I don't think they like my message. And if they didn't like my message before, they're going to hate it tonight. Mm, so you might all get unsubscribed tonight. But I don't give me. <laughs> I don't care. Whatever. You know, I'm going to keep on keeping on, you know. Um, I also had as far as being sick with farm maintenance, because one of the things that we've talked about so many times is just getting to getting the farm in a place where one person can manage it. Half time. And, half time. That's important to me. Yes. Um, and even though there's certain things that I do in a particular way, i.e. how much you feed an animal, and then um, somebody else comes in and says, oh, well, you're, you know, I'm just going to give them a little bit more, you know, where then we go through a whole canister of food in the same amount of time that Gypsy goes through two cans of food with eight cows. We go through one can of food with two cows. So it's. Um, cows are some kind of a sore subject. Cows are a wonderful subject. <laughs> They're not sore at all. <laughs> at least not to me. <laughs> so, um, Charlotte Oak says uh, red raspberry for nausea. Deep South says, I had a large bleeding polyp removed and now so much better. Good for you. Hey, Dragonfly Ryan, good evening and welcome. Yeah, long time no see. Yeah. Yep. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I want to keep my hellos going because they scroll by and then I miss them. And yeah. I forget to say hello to somebody and yeah. that would be bad. But anyway, just being on the same page as far as farm maintenance goes. Yeah. And, and, and have a plan. Yeah. What happens when man down? Yeah. You know, how do you get through it? Like, again, guys, we didn't get to everything. I didn't keep the house up to her standard, right? Um, there's things that I missed along the way, right? There's things that I needed to get done. I didn't get done, but everybody ate, everybody yeah. slept, everybody's okay. B got her medicine. Yeah. Right. I mean, the the, the, the critical components, you know, it's kind of like, it's interesting, kind of like when we talk about managing energy, when you have a red day, a green day, and a yellow day. Right. And it's kind of the same thing. Right. When you have a man down, you kind of get to a red day where you're like, OK, what what has like to get critical? Done? It's just the critical stuff. It's not it's none of the rest of the stuff that, you know, you had planned for the week or the two weeks. You know, I had to had a, had you not gotten sick, I would have probably already had concrete poured. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not a negative at yeah. all. It just no, is what it I, is. I know I, I would have already had the ceiling grouted in the new bathroom. Right. And right. But none of, none of that stuff happened. No, and it still hasn't. I mean, even though that I, I am feeling better, I don't want to overdo it to where I'm back to square one. So I'm still not sanding drywall. I'm mm -hmm. still not um, grouting yet. Um, but uh, I got laundry done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I washed all of the bedding and all of the couch blankets and all of the everything that could be washed. I have washed just because I don't want to create those, you know, germs in our environment. So um, mm -hmm. coughing and hacking and mm -hmm. stuff. So uh yeah. Gizmo says, I'm open to wisdom on how to handle reevaluation. Fortunately, my house hasn't been built. Do I have to let them in or is it a county by state law? So every law is different and every state's different. And, and where I live, Gizmo, they're not allowed to go in your house. So, and in fact, I can require them to survey my property from the road. And the problem if I do that, they'll launch the drone. It's like um, each county is different yeah, but, though in our state. Yeah. And then each one runs a little bit different. So what, what I would do if I was you, Gizmo, is... Um, my words of wisdom to you is go understand the rules to the game. Walk directly in to that your county clerk's office or the treasurer's office, whoever does it for you and say, hey, how is this done? And don't just take their word for it. Show it to me. Show me where it says this. Where do I find this information so that I can research it for myself as the absolute best? Well, then you have something to fall back on, not just Susie said. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah Jonathan says uh, he would have had a, that I would have had the Wallapini done had you not gotten sick. Right. Thank you, Jonathan. He probably would have. Yeah. Oh, Skanesville makes a great point. It sucks trying to plan for a man down when it's only yourself. Right. Well, but there's still ways around this. I mean, well, I, community. You, just like you had people who were like, I'm coming to do chores. That's right. And you said, I, I could do it. Yeah. And they were like, it's yeah. fine. I'm still coming to do chores. That's so, right. and you had that several days, right? Oh, yeah. Where, oh, and I've, I could have gotten much more help. 
you know, I was refusing it often, you know, but the fact is that's exactly right. Skins girl. And, and yeah. I think B has a great point. And this is where community comes in is because we can pick up that slack. And you know, I promise you, if I needed it, I could have gotten any to help doing anything that I needed to do. Yeah. Right. Um, the whole guarantee you I could have, it would have been very, very easy. One phone call and it would have been done. Yeah. Um, so I would start with community. But the other thing is, is, is if you are alone and if you don't have community, think about how to automate your processes. Mm. Think about how to make them work, even if you have to fight through, even if you had to get out of bed to get over there to feed them. I don't know if I could have. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember going to bed. I put you to bed. And I don't rem. I mean, though, there's, I've missed days. I know. I put you to bed. So. I care. I picked you up. I put you in bed. I got you undressed. I got your pajamas on you. I put the blankets on you. I kissed you on the forehead. And that was the end of it. Yeah. Two days later, you're wanting to know what happened. <laughs> yeah. I. <laughs> <laughs> Spag says uh, sanding drywall is horrible when you're not well, let alone when you're recovering. Yeah, no doubt. When you are well. Yeah. Hey, the instigator is in the house and he wants to know, did you say they would launch a drone? Yes, I said they would launch a drone. That's absolutely right, which I am not fond of. And there's some fight going on in our county, whether they can legally do that or not. But I think that they would absolutely do that. Yeah. Heidi Homestead, good evening to you. Oh, my goodness. I am probably way behind. All right. Um, let me see. Are they legal? Register drone remote ID now required operator license not be on line of sight. Yeah. So they um, county bought a couple years ago a big, I mean, a big drone. Like, I mean, like, like a wheelbarrow four foot across, right? In diameter, a big drone um, for the purposes of assessing properties. I have never seen it fly over. But I would imagine if I pushed, well, that's what they would. When we lived at the other house, there were some, remember that car that we um, called the sheriff and said, mm -hmm. there's a car in and the he pulled up neighbor's the drive yep. or in the neighbor's field. And they pulled up a police officer, got his drone out and just mm -hmm. launched it, you know, and went around the area. Mm -hmm. So um, that is a very common thing, even for rural Kansas. So. Vicky Poland says, and B would have made tag dessert if she wasn't sick. Probably. Probably not. You've got, <laughs> you've gotten, you know, a few things here and there. Gizmo, I love this. I absolutely love this comment. Um, I learned a long time ago that refusing help is robbing the person of giving the, of the gift of giving. Oh. That's really well said. I'm going to think about that. Backrat says, ah, yeah. tag taking care of things. No, it wasn't that special. It was that special. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. Because <laughs> when you, I mean, when you just don't even remember what, you know, what the days, what, what is going on. Mm -hmm. Like I was just, I was out of it. You were. Mentally, I was not even there. I know. I know. We took care of it though. Right. And the good news is, like I said, everything got taken care of. The necessities. The red day. The red day was handled. The green day was not handled very well. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I think that um, in situations like that, you have to be lenient on yourself and just go with the flow. Yeah. You know, get done what you can get do. Get done what you can. And then just let everything else. Just don't even look at it. Let's see here. Wonder which one that one's in. Oh, probably it's probably on my phone. I'm sorry, I was gonna. Um, I had someone send me a picture. I'm gonna see what it is here. Oh, good. Look at that egg. Yeah, but this is one they found. I'll share it real quick if you guys don't mind. So, um, someone sent me while we were sitting here talking. Someone sent me a picture of an interesting egg. Did you read Starla first? Oh yeah, Starla says. Unfortunately, my both my husband and I have limitations, but we adjust how to do things. Physical disability. BD, Physical disabilities and sickness or disease cause permanent problems, but being able to adjust is key. I think not just being able to adjust, but also don't get your day so full, you can't make a mistake. Yeah. That's why, why we always say that our homestead will be able to be managed with half of one of us. That's how it has to be. And if I can't get there, we've gotten too big. If I can't get there, I need to automate things. If we can't get there, we need to change things because again, B goes down. I still have my whole full workload to do that I would that is a full time work, but now I pick up her work and then also trying to make sure she's squared away or vice versa. And so I think if you 
set that as a goal. Let's say you don't even get there. Let's say you get to where you could do it with three quarters of one person. You're still winning, right? You're still making some ground there. Um, let me get this off the screen here real quick. So anyway, let me share this real quick. Present, share screen, share screen. Okay, right here. So Nidos says, tag, I sent you a pic of an egg I found in the coop with 10-month-old chicks. Thought it was a fluke, but she laid another the same size again today. 10-month-old yeah. chick. Yeah, but look, it's almost four inches. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big egg. That's an egg. That's a big egg. Wow. Is that the only thing that's in that coop? Are the chickens? There's no turkeys in there? No geese? No? Around here, I wouldn't fly my drone or someone else's property or it could get taken down. Mo Engineer says uh, they use planes in Missouri, also not like the criminal law, guilty until proven innocent. They tend to overtax and make you prove different to reduce. Yes, they do. I've heard that. Yeah. Um, oh, look at that. Life with Mike and Jan are in the house. They said they're late. You guys are perfectly on time. Perfect. Um, Gypsy says, my mom would say, don't rob me of a blessing. Mm -hmm. That's so to cool. Help. Yeah, so cool. So, so, so cool. Okay. I've never looked at it like that. You're right. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. You know, I gave a um, Thursday, I gave a speech about leadership. And, um, you know, one of the things we talked about, two of the points we talked about a lot was empathy and perspective. And that, um, you know, empathy being to put, being able to put yourself in someone else's shoes and then the perspective to be able to understand other people's opinions, right? And the perspective of how everything interlocks and how everything works um, together. And I think it's, again, perspective is a great way to say that, right? Yeah. Don't rob them of their blessing. Because you could look at that either way. Right. right. Well, you did. Yep. I right. got it. I got it. Don't right. don't worry yourselves. Yep. yep. Yeah, that egg is big crazy. Hey, Toby. Future Kansan. What's going on, my friend? Let me see here. If she's still young, her body may be just adjusting to cycling. I hope she gets better in a better cycle soon. She's at risk for prolapse if her system doesn't work itself out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay, that chicken. Cool. All right. I'm, I think I'm caught up. All right. Cool. You, you want me to go? Go ahead. Okay. So I got, I want to ask you guys your opinion on something. So I found a kind of a grain cart. Um, a bee's been wanting one that I can buy for $700. Not exactly what I want, but I want to see what you guys Let think. Let me see it. So, <clears throat> if you look, B, there's actually an auger in the bottom of this one, and it runs up the chute. And you see those two lines? Those yeah. are hydraulic lines. So, what that means is you could hook this up to the back of your tractor. You could plug those hydraulic, line, hydraulic lines in and pull up to a feeder and hit the button, and it would fill the feeder. Okay. So it's like a transporter, not uh -huh. necessarily a store. Well, you could use it to store it in if you would put a top on it. The one thing I don't like about this is that there's no top on it. So I would have to manufacture a top. What is on top of it now? You just got wood stacked up. This is in an old farmer's barn, which is very uh, normal yeah. to Kansas, right? Yeah. This thing's been sitting in there for a while, except what was interesting is four of or three of the four tires were not flat. Huh. But it's clearly been sitting there a while because of all the stuff, all the stuff that's been, you know, kind of. Yeah put up there. It looks like it's in good shape. Not but bad. if it doesn't have a top on it, then it not have a top the rain will just go right in. Yeah, you'd have so to build a top. To put... I'd have to weld a metal top on it. You know, put something up there that would allow us to um, keep the rodents out. Yeah. Redneck says, I can make a top for it. Um, so you got to volunteer to make a top. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks like it already has a top. It's just wood. Wood, yeah, but you would need a top on it. One that you could take to the and get filled Bill. and close, but also one you could, you know, bring back home. So and then um, store so that it I mean, because if you just have mice going in mm -hmm. it, then that would just ruin the feed anyway. So yeah. Um, Mo says don't bins need to be vented. Yeah, air circulation is big. And I can pump air in it real easy. I can get air circulation in there easy. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's actually a little door that opens and closes right there. 
So I think that would be fine as far as doing that. Um, how much does it hold, says Gypsy? I don't know. So would this is, is the purpose of this to just go get feed and come back and then fill containers? No, I it? think I think the original purpose, and you farmers out there, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I think the purpose of this is to go up underneath some kind of elevator on your own farm, fill it up, and go drive around the fields feed, feeding cows. Is its original purpose. Okay. What I want to know is it's a third of the cost of buying you yeah. a grain bin that holds half as much. <laughs> yeah. Can I m manipulate this situation in a way that one, you get a cart, you can drive around and dump food on the ground if you want to. Right. I mean, you'll have that ability with it, but also can I store, you know, food in it? Toby says that is well worth the money. We bought a portable fee bulk feeder. Um, they're around three grand. Do you know how big is this like two ton? What is this container? Do you know? Um, I don't know. One he ton, was, the the owner ton. wasn't there when I was there. So I don't know how big it is. And there's no markings um, on it. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna say five ton probably. Oh it's big. But um Life with Mike and Jen says Tag better stock up on chocolate for his sippy cup. Prices are going up. <laughs> You know what's really cool about all the shenanigans, Jen, with chocolate milk, is that everybody likes to give me gag gifts, gag gifts of Hershey's chocolate milk. Like number ten cans. Yeah, of chocolate I get them syrup. all the time, so I'm I am well stocked in chocolate syrup. Oh yeah, see, Toby says right there, most of them are five or six tons. That's a lot of food. Yeah. Hey Barbie, how are you? Barbie, not doll. Hello, Barbie Not Doll says gravity box with an auger was used for filling corn planters with fertilizer. Hmm. Yeah, when I looked in this one, it had corn, there's corn in there when I looked. Yeah, WA says, how would you fill it from the side door or on top? Where I would think what we could do is build like the reverse on the top, right? So there's a smaller hole up top with some lid that opens and closes and you could just pull it to the elevator. They could fill it up. You tow it home, right? And that, that's that. Why couldn't you just use if it's if it has a shoot on it? Why couldn't you just take it to the to the feed store, fill it up, bring it home, and then use that shoot to fill individual you cans could. with? You could. You absolutely could. You could actually. Then, I mean, when we build the new barn, we could build a drive-through. You could actually passage. park this in the barn, babe, and I could make it to where the the spout just goes in the barn, and you walk up and hit a button, and it fills up your bucket. You know, there's all kinds of things you can do with that. Um, Tag uh, Spag says, "I'd be so happy if Tag got me a bulk feeder and filled it with white queso." <laughs> <laughs> he would like that too. Yeah. Let me see. Oops. Toby says three ton of corn is eight fifty five down here. Three ton. Yep. LJC says what's a good long term food storage version of chocolate? Does it exist? I'm thinking the cocoa butter would make it go rancid. It would go rancid mm -hmm. quick, I would think. Yeah. Yeah, my wife would say chicory because that's what she says for everything. If you don't have coffee, you get chicory. If you don't have chocolate, you get chicory. Everybody gets chicory, but guys, I've had chicory. Chicory for everybody. Let me tell you something. Chicory coffee tastes like dirt. It grows in the yard. I can get it. But it's dirt. It would be better than just pond water, though, I think. Right? Yeah. yeah. Indiana says, my buddy made a top out of cattle panels formed in an arch with a tarp, tarp over it. The coop um, will deliver feed with a truck um, and an auger on it. Yeah. The co-op. Yeah. Um, hey, unique prepping. What's up, my friend? How is Zach? Tulip Little Angel, good evening to you, says, can you drive that on to a raised curb and then empty the feed into a wheelbarrow? Yes. It actually, you can move that spout anywhere you want. It's actually even got a hand crank on it. So you could hand crank it out if you didn't want to hook it up to the hydraulics. Jeez. Which I think is pretty neat. Uh, let me see here. Nito says, that is coop is just 10-month-old belay fielder chickens. Mm-hmm. Belay fielder. Cocoa powder. One more rock. How long does cocoa powder stay? Because I would think you'd have the same issue. You know, Jules said, uh, oh, sorry. Miss one. Jules, where did it go? Oh, my goodness. That was Jules. No, I had I had Jules on here. But, oh, right there. Jules. LJC, I was thinking about chocolate powder, uh, milk powder. Would that still have the same issues? I think it would. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've had cocoa, pa uh, what is that? Hot cocoa mix go bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Barbie Nadal says we would take off the auger and use the gravity to pick corn, corn on the cob, and fill the corn cribs. Mm. Yeah, half bubble off plum says I can't do chicory, gives me migraines. Yeah, I mm. can do it, it just tastes like dirt. Let me see. Okay, Jen says dry cacao powder. Cacao. 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 <laughs> cacao. Yeah. Cocoa. I wonder what 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 a skeins girl can you define define for me a very long time? What does that mean? Let me see here. Oh, there we go. So anyway, um, I'm trying to decide whether or not this would be a good buy. Again, I can buy it for seven hundred dollars if I want it. It's um, three miles from me, so it would even be hard to go get. It's a um, but. What do you think? I think that if we had a place to park it in out of the weather or a uh, top on it would be um, beneficial. But if it's just open, it wouldn't, no, you we can't, have no place to put a yeah, you thing. Can't, of, you can't leave it open. I mean, you could technically create a shed to pull it in that is the top, you know, and pull it out, but. But then it still would get mice in there and, and, <laughs> and have issues. Because then you Jean Minky it. says Cafe du Monde coffee. Cafe du Monde? Monde? Coffee with chicory is the best, was raised on this stuff. Yep, Todd 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 says that's a good buy. Oh, cool. Pretty cool. All right. Well, that would have, I mean, if if we got something like that, because one of the things I had on my list was um gypsy going and helping me get feed. So um, well, maybe we need to talk to Gypsy and this could be his business. He could just drive around filling everybody's feed containers. Cause that's another thing you could do with this baby is you could pull it up next to your barn, take that auger and walk over and put it on top of your barrels and just fill them up, fill, fill, them, up, it fill up. them up, fill them up. Yeah. And then you, you, you buy what you're going to be using so that you're not storing and then wasting, um, feed so gypsy showed up and said um i brought you some feed well i thought he was just coming to get his can but he ended up filling it and bringing it back so that i had mm -hmm. more feed and he said go, go get your tractor and i was like by myself <laughs> <laughs> and he was like looked he looked at me like yeah go get the tractor so i went and i got it and watched his you know movements and i pulled it right up to his trailer and he wheeled it over the can into the into my bucket and i proceeded up to the and i fought at the whole time like okay i'll just put it on there and then i'll, I'll put the the, <coughs> the feed barrel on the bucket and then i'll just let it stay there until you get home i'll let gypsy go and then he starts walking up to get the gate. And I'm like, okay, okay, so I'm going to follow him. Okay, we're going to go. And then I thought, okay, I'll just get it in the gate. And then I'll just drop it right there. And then I'll come back and do it later. And he's like, well, do you have a, a hand cart, a dolly. dolly? And I was like, yeah, I mean, I have all these things. I, I could do this. And so, I mean, it literally took like 10 minutes and we had the the barrel off the uh, trailer onto the tractor, into the pan, into the corral, onto the ground, onto the hand cart, into the building. And then he's like, that's it. Like, I'm leaving. I'm like, that was so easy. Like, I could do this. You guys see what I live with every single day. I you, did it! <laughs> Toby says, B, you'll never find another bulk feeder for that price. Yeah, that's kind of the, you score when you come across a farmer who has something that they're no longer using mm -hmm. that you could use and they just want to get rid of it. So. Gypsy says, better than that, I can make trips and pick up 30 more cows for tag. No, you cannot. No, you cannot. I'm drawing the line right there. Um, yeah, so what they're talking about in the chat is um, 
Zach's talking about how he's 28% towards his new computer build. So what we're trying to do, for those of you guys know um, Zach from Unique Prep, and he has cerebral palsy and he's not vocal. So um, we're trying to create the technology where he can go do some public speaking using a computer. Right? It's very it's expensive to do it. And so we've been working on getting money donated to Zach so that Zach can put that stuff together and he can share his story of his challenges and prepping and how they relate together. And Zach's been an inspiration for a lot of us. I've been um, on his show several times. He's going to do mine. Um, we can never get it settled in, but um, that's what they're talking about in the chat, FYI. If anybody wants to know how they can donate to Zach um, to help him get that computer built so he can go do those kinds of things, um, we can absolutely put a link in the, uh, in, in fact, one of the um, moderators, if you wouldn't mind, put a link there. I'll, I'll post it up top. Um, let me see here. Would it be Zach's channel or what? what Red, redneck, redneck, redneck. <laughs> Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm going to need a much bigger barn if I'm getting 20 cows. And Starla Doak said she would love to help. So I'm going to get a link posted up here somewhere. So if someone wants to donate to Zach and help him on his journey um, to getting that, I think it would be great. Um, guys, let me tell you something. Zach does fine anyway. Um, it's just not the the technology he would need to speak publicly, right? He can do it, but um, and so we're going to work hard to get that. It would help get him. that for him. Oh, there we go, right here, Jules. Jules, you're so awesome. So here's that link tree, um, you guys. It's in the chat. If somebody just wants is interested, just click on that link, and it will it'll tell you what to do. Sound good? And uh, Jules, if you don't mind, every you know, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, if you post it, I'll I'll you know put it back up on there. Okay, so let's talk about the next topic. So B has got her hands full right now. And, you know, she is like having two wives in a lot of ways. Right? I am? You are. A lot of ways. Just from a financial. I wouldn't say that. Just from a financial perspective. I mean, a lot of times, a lot of guys <laughs> would think that that would be fantastic. Like, you would be a lucky man. To have the expense of two, we'd be lucky? You didn't say the expense of two. <laughs> you said it would be like having two. <laughs> I mean, you'd have a clean house and clean clothes <laughs> and food and background says Jared carefully. That's right. <laughs> That's right. All right. Well, I guess I will just go on to the next slide, which is B got some chicks. I did chicks? get some chicks this One morning. One died already, though. Yes, it We're came. gonna have a chicken nugget for dinner. It came that way. Um, so these are the speckled Sussex. We got a call this morning at seven 30. The post office said you have chicks here. So I said, I'm, I'm on my way. I said, are you even open? And she said, no, knock on the door. So I drove into town, got some chicks, brought them home. I already had every, the brooder was already set up and ready for them. So we, um, dipped their beaks in they're off to a great start. Man, were they loud. This morning it was like 46 degrees and they were very loud all the way home. So got them home, put them in the brooder, um, got their electrolyte water and their chick start. And you can't see it in the picture, but there's a, a heat plate over in the top corner. Um, and they, the one that didn't make it was just kind of smashed at the bottom of the box. So, um, I brought it in and put it in front of the fireplace thinking that if I warmed it up, it would help. But within 30 minutes, it was no longer. So, um, I don't even know, are there 20 birds there? Did you buy 20 birds? Uh, I think I bought 25 females and four males, I think. Which... I'm not sure how they would sex them that early, but um, they are all doing pretty good. And what does what does Mo mean? Does B know about paper B now? I don't get paper it. Paper B. I don't get it. I don't get it. Let's see here. Starla says, "I need ideas. I have a big room with a floor of peel and stick tile that is hideous. Just wondering, can it be painted? Can afford? Can't afford new tile." Um, Gabe to say from Midwest. So what's underneath it? First, let's start there, Starla. So if you were to peel it off, what would be underneath it? Let's start there, and I'll, I'll be able to help you. You can paint, peel, and stick, though, can't yeah. you? You probably could. It's not going to stick real well. 
but if it's already concrete underneath, strip it all off, give it a good sanding and, and just leave stain it. it. And you can or stain it with things like tea and all kinds of stuff. Grateful Hearts Ranch, good evening to you, Glenn Forner. Good evening to you. Let's see here. I love this season. We got 10 uh, chicks from the store and 40 more in the incubator plus a dozen duck eggs. Yeah, it is the time of year, isn't it? Yeah. New yep. life. Dana Green, good evening. Says I have eight hatchlings, also eight days old. And it is definitely time. I would have already have been incubating my barnyard oh. mix, <laughs> but um, we are trying to introduce a new... I think my drawing was quite resemblant. I think we had a lot of resemblance. What do you think? Yeah. Huh? No. <laughs> that looks like a redhead. That's 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 my other wife. Um, but these are a new breed that we haven't had um, in the past. So we're trying to introduce a new speckled. Tell them what it is. Spe speckled Sussex. Yeah. Yeah. Our chicks are five or six days old, and they caught a moth today. Fun to watch the game of chase for a bit. Yeah, Mo, I'm slow tonight. Sorry, but I got it. And yes, I have paper B and I have B, and they're not jealous, but even though they know of each other. Yeah. Right? Yeah, got it, guys. Sorry, I'm just apparently slow. slow. Yeah, anyway. So that's been going on with B, and um, I've been working in my closet. As you guys can see, I've made some ground. You've made a lot of ground. It looks fantastic. So while B was sick, um, I couldn't really go outside. Like I wanted to go work on the on the community building and the concrete, but what I could actually work on was stuff that was close. And so whatever um, time I had to do things, <laughs> I worked in the closet. And uh, look at that grilled cheese sandwich. I know, right? Yeah, that's a, Eden's rough when you're not around. The pickings are slim. Yeah. You know, hey, conserved friends, how are you? Good evening. Those drawers used to be um, <laughs> stained cherry wood. So this is a very different uh, look for our. Yeah, P.S. Remember, two wives is still cheaper than two ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. Wanda Weber says, uh, you will like the speckled Sussex. Um, DW says, so what was the reason you chose the speckled Sussex? This is actually a really great question. So, um, we, for a long, long time, we've had chickens a long time, but we always just had a barnyard mix, you know, whatever came, wherever we got. And we, and they were good. They've been good chickens. I mean, they lay great eggs. They yeah. taste fine when we eat them. All of that stuff's fine. But, but as the world continues to get weird, I began to get, um, more and more um, aware of my liabilities that I have for things like chicken food, right? And cow food and just the things that you buy and those kind of things. And so what I want to, I went on this journey to find out what was the best dual breed bird. And when I say dual breed bird, you know, there's really kind of no such thing, but um, something that lays decent eggs that we can eat. Um, but what I was looking for was which ones were a great foragers, which ones had great predator instincts. And so after I researched them and I spent a couple weeks um, at night when she was sleeping in bed, just trying to read and read and read. And so what I have determined based upon my research research is that the speck, speckled Sussex gave me the traits that I wanted as a dual purpose bird that also was a good mom, but more importantly, was a good forager. Yeah. So I want them to feed themselves for as long as they can feed themselves through the year. And so that's why I chose them, DW. I hope that answers your question. He's like, no more mouths to feed. Right. Yeah. Take I, care of yourself. Yeah, I've been saying no more mouths to feed for a while. And you guys will see I'm losing this battle. Do we hear? It was like 25 chicks don't eat much. I mean, like that whole canister. And, and, well. and you've got turkeys coming when? May. <laughs> How many turkeys you got coming, B? Like two. <laughs> you, you're lying to these people. <laughs> I don't right. know how many. 30. Too many is what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Two. <laughs> oh, my Thank you, God. Jen. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yes, thank you very much. We want to do our best to get, uh, you know, Zach squared away. And I, I really think he's got an important message to tell. And I think he's a great source of motivation. I know that he is for me, you know. Um, he manages to stay positive and to live this life and to prep and to do the things that he feels important with the challenges that he has. And if he can do it, I got no reason to bitch about nothing. 
you know? And yeah. so I'm very proud of him and I'm very thankful for him. And, um, you know, my life's better because I know him. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, let me see here. Big kid says dual purpose animals, i.e. Dexter cows, American guinea hogs, etc. And not just dual purpose, because that's important, but I also want foragers. I want, and, and people and animals with good predator instincts, because I think as time wears on, you know, those kinds of things just get harder and harder and harder. Yeah. The grip gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And then, then what happens? Right. And so we've got to figure out how to create our own systems. And part of creating your system is focusing on the backside of the argument. Yeah. If I can get good foragers, I don't have to make enough food, buy enough food, produce enough food. Right. Yeah. They'll do a lot of that for themselves. Make sense. Yep. You agree with that? And we will eventually um, incubate those birds. So yes. we're going to eventually replace all of what we have. Right. With this breed, assuming we learn to like them and all of that stuff, because right. it'll be a transition period. And we do have the American breast that we got from Gypsy. Yeah. Um, they gifted us a dozen yeah. um, last year. Right. Yeah. And we have quite a few of them still. And they're good birds. Um, the ones we got from the neighbor in the in the very beginning, they've been good birds, mm -hmm. um, have provided more than enough yeah have provided for us this whole time mm -hmm. and then i have grown new birds through the year so um self-sustaining mm -hmm. do for yourself yeah uh-huh ljc nice try tag when are you going to tell us about the herd of 30 that you're going to get well you know it's interesting that you say mm -hmm. that because you know b i want you to tell us again that that feeding how many chicks it's uh, just one not, was like 25. Yeah, just not that much, is it? It's not that much. And then when you add 30 turkeys, it's not that much, is it? It's a little bit more. But not bad, right? Not bad. Uh-huh. So let me ask you something. What did you do? I added a cow. <laughs> and yes, I mean, the cow will eat more than the chicks. <laughs> she, her, and hold, the on, turkey. hold on. B and Lou decided they would go shopping today. And B came home with a cow. Well, so. A cow. I said that I was interested in a cow and Lou did some shopping, did some research. And we did last, um, this last month we went and we did look at a, another Dexter girl and she like threw herself on her back trying to get away from us. Cause she just did not want to come home with us. And so, um, I hear Jen in the background saying, buy once, cry once. And so I, I walked away from that particular girl. And then this particular fine looking. The black one. Gal um, was literally around the corner from us. And she came up for sale and Lou did some research and found her bloodline and her gene genes, her genes. Genetics. And then um, talking to her, we went and we looked at her today and we brought her home. So we now have Moo Cow. Her name is Moo and she's a cow. Mm -hmm. So um, she is uh, registered as a white Dexter. She's black. <laughs> But she has white babies. <laughs> and so um, we get there and she was not confirmed bred. But when we got there, uh, we noticed that she was slightly larger than what we had thought. And Lou said, uh, yeah, she's bred. And when we had gone, we were thinking that she, if she was bred and we could confirm it, that was, she was going to be due around November. And when we got there, the lady said, yeah, she's like due in a couple of weeks. And we're like, whoa, what the, what just happened? So instead of going and looking at Moo, um, we looked at Moo and, <laughs> and, and she's with calf. So, and she's now home. So what went from feeding two cows now I'm feeding three and in a couple of weeks, I'll be feeding four two and a half. So how much feed does it take for the 30 new, these birds and the 30 new, these birds and now two more cows. 
Is it still insignificant? It's a little bit more than what it was last it's a week. A little bit more than it was last week. But a hundred percent more. She is so gentle, and she is just beautiful. And um, she's A two A two, and her bloodline is superior. And what does that have to do with anything? She's a fine looking <laughs> girl right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So she is settling in. I put some new hay in the barn. She didn't want it, but the other two did. Um, so she's off by herself um, outside of the barn because she just did not want to go in there with the others. Yeah, so half bubble off plum says, sounds like you did move less being. Literally. I did. move -less. Yeah. You want to hear something funny? So LJC says, that's cool. Mo is in so in trouble. I want a black cow that has white calves. Well, I got to tell you a story, LJC. So your husband was at my farm um, today. Mm -hmm. and, and he I, gave you permission. Yes. And no, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and he, we, him and I were walking out and I said, hey, Mo, I'm going to give you some advice if I can. I said, do not allow your wife to go shopping with me and Lou. It will all end bad. And he stopped and without hesitation said, are you kidding me? Do you really think I have any control of that? Yeah. <laughs> like direct and to the point. So, so yeah. now we're getting a grain wagon. Good thing you're getting a grain wagon tag, says LJC. Yes. You guys. Yep. So yeah. she is beautiful. She's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And this uh, baby was her last baby. So mm -hmm. this is not... We didn't get that baby. She's now pregnant again, but that was her last one. Uh, Gypsy yeah. said she's double registered ADCA and WDCA, which I don't care about, but B does. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm starting to. I'm starting to care about all of these <laughs> not letters. But yeah. when... Can you milk her? It was... See, Tamara and me are on the same page. Yes. That's all that matters. So here's the thing. The previous owner, she's almost five. So she's four right now. She'll be five next month. Um, she is never been milked because the previous owner did not have any interest in that. But when we were there, we, um, could play with her and she did not care about, um, us fondling her. So she was so gentle and, um, just everything that I, I was looking for. Um, is the tag. Is Tag going to milk her or B? B. She's probably B. chocolate milk. Yeah. Yeah. Tag, there's chicken math where 20 is really 10 and then there's cow calus where four is two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Cow LJC and Jen, you should be ashamed of yourselves. Mm -hmm. Jen, she was beautiful. Uh -huh. You should yeah, uh -huh. just wait till you see her. Tim, good evening. Says uh, y'all need to go ahead and get that cart. You're going to need a silo before 2025. Yeah. Oh, but it's just a little bit more feed. Just, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if she if she has a bull calf and he's white, we will keep him and breed him. Great. Great. And if guess what? If you have a white bull, it matches your tractor. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> yeah, Joan says, come on. She did make a great buy. She did make a great buy because when we got there, the lady, it was she, uh, Lou talked her down $500. So. Mm -hmm. Gregory says, how old is she? A2, A2 is really good for some people. Yep. She's, she's almost five. Yeah. And she has had three calves, all white. Um, Spag says, you got a free cow. That's what happened. How is it free? Free cow. Spags, this is clearly wife math, and you've been spent too much time in your home. That is not free. There's nothing free about it. She paid, and she paid a ton for the black cow, and it's the bonus. You know, get you know, go 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 buy this box of you know cookies, and you get twenty percent more, and then you're convinced you really got twenty percent more. Sorry, bud. Yeah. I don't, then no. He'll get it. Yeah. No, he'll understand. I bought a Jersey beef cross calf skin in the back seat of my Toyota uh, five hours away from where I live eight years ago. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. Mo says, do you have milking stuff? Nope. No, Not no, yet. no, no. See what my wife does. Just like she, you guys remember last year with the turkey coop. 
She just yeah. informed me that we had turkeys coming and I had to get the coop in. Yeah. So no, that's not how it works in my world. She buys them and then expects me to pick up the pieces. Yeah. We will need some kind of, um, yeah, milking station inside of a like barn to keep her in. You're going to get expensive this year. They're the, this is a homestead. You have to put the money in in order to make it. You can't even say that with a straight face. How else am you I going to get that? the milk? <laughs> like, I'm not producing it on my own anymore, buddy. This is our best bet right here. It, Joan, it was not buy one, get one free. It was pay twice as much as the first one's worth and make me feel like I it got really one free. It really wasn't. We we paid a good price for her. She was. <laughs> the we, we didn't do nothing. You got a mouse in your pocket? Yeah. We didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. We are a team. Yeah. Well, it's either just a cow or a cow that's bred or a cow that's bred and has a calf on her. No, it's a cow that's bred. That's what it is. Yeah. Tag that cow means freedom. Don't you support freedom? <laughs> you know yes. what? Don't, LJC, go, go get a Coke. I ain't even playing that. I ain't taking that bait. Freedom is not having to depend on the system for feed. Well, so here's the thing. If we um, feed them less, then... You guys are all ridiculous. Then they would... Um, they, they're they self-sufficient. Like, she has not been raised on sweet feed. She has only been raised on uh, hay. So... Yeah, you... And, and our farm produces mm -hmm. hay... Or mm -hmm. prairie grass, and um, that's what she'll <laughs> eat. So it is really a good deal to get fresh, unpasteurized, unpoisoned milk for my family. Mm -hmm. and okay, then, so you guys all heard it that B is committed. She's going to milk them and create all kinds of that fresh stuff. And you're going to drink it, buddy. Yeah, I'll drink it. I got no problem with that. You guys heard it, right? I'm going to have to learn because, like, I've never done that before. Start messing with her. And one I had, all you had to do was keep feed in front of her while you were milking her. Yeah. Yeah. And I promise you she's going <laughs> to she, she's gonna make me build something. Tag, you're starting to sound like a tight ass. <laughs> no, it's not that. And, and at the end of the day, if that makes my bride happy, I don't care. I really don't care. It's just... There's a thing in homesteading called the ripple effect. And yeah. many people don't understand it. And my wife is completely clueless to it. Completely clueless. The things that we do today have a ripple effect. Bringing home a cow sets in a chain of events. Right? Yeah. All of that stuff does. No different than if, if you have an animal that dies. Right. Creates a chain of events. Right? And so it's about the ripple effect. And unfortunately, in, in as we divide up our the division of labor on the farm, that ripple effect mostly falls in my lap. Right? Yeah. So so you agree you're creating a ripple effect for well, me. Well, I mean, this ripple effect, once once the infrastructure is in, it's in. So you don't have to revisit that situation. So a lot of this that we're doing, you know, when we, when we said, Hey, I want to go and I want to raise my own food so that I know where it's coming from and I know what's in it. And I know all of this stuff, which is another thing I have on my list, but, um, you have, you have to have the infrastructure first. And so we, for oh, when you have to have it now, when you had, no, no, no. What did you say just a minute ago? What, first. So you have to have the infrastructure first before you buy the animal. Well, whatever. I mean, it's a nice, it's nice oh, yeah. enough out right now uh -huh. that if she doesn't uh -huh. have to have it. Uh -huh. But what I'm saying is once the barn is in and built, just like the turkey coop, I'm not going to need another turkey coop because I have a turkey coop, but now I have cows. So I do need a cow barn. <laughs> but once the cow barn is up and built, then I'm not going to need another cow barn. Right. Mm -hmm. So you build it by once, cry once. Um, <laughs> no, you're, we're going you're, to, we're going to have the barn. We're going to have the cows. We're going to have the milk. We're going to have the food. Jen, Lou and B and LJC in this whole conversation. You guys are trouble. Absolute trouble. No, we're just, we are wives who are, care about our families and we want <laughs> to feed you the best mm -hmm. that we can. 
And in order to do that, we have to take it upon ourselves to grow those. You guys are so funny. Those things. So funny. Jen says the calf was was free. Well, 99% free. No, it wasn't. She paid twice as much as the cow was worth because it was pregnant. No, I didn't pay twice as much. How much more do you suppose you paid than it was worth? I, I, I paid for the A2A2, the jeans, the white, the, I got the whole package. It wasn't because <laughs> she was pregnant. It wasn't, I mean, that was a, uh -huh. a plus because when I went there, she said, the lady said, I am not confirming that she's pregnant until we got there and went, how can you not confirm that? You know, I mean, like it, that's obvious that she's bred. Oh my goodness. But whether she was bred or not, my intent was to go and to take a serious look at her. Mo wants to know how much milk will that make for you? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But I mean. So JB says, no, milking means twice a day, every, every day, day, no vacations. Ask me how I know. Yeah, that's right. Okay. No man that's down. That's right. Right? No man down. All right. I got to skip up here a little bit. I'm falling behind. Our house is carnivore. That spares freedom. I, here's the, at the end of the day. I'm so blessed that I have a wife that buys cows. Right? I mean, that's that's really what it comes down to. And she really, truly. Cow. Does. Cow. I mean, she, the lady had several for sale. I only brought one. You know, I was home. just in the middle of letting you totally off the hook. And then you do that. Do what? You bought I, I bought a cow. That was good about getting ready to have a baby. That was the bonus. <laughs> I did not know that. I was not, she was not confirmed. Okay. Uh-huh. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. this is getting good. Yeah, I'm, I'm just never going to win. Country for sure. Good evening to you. Milk yeah. and cheese. Milk and cheese would be wonderful. Yeah. Yep. If and, I could and you'll get strong hands. You'll have man hands. Well, I mean... Jules, I am not fussing. It's again, at the end of the day, it's a small thing. Next, I'll go on with my life. It's just sometimes it's the ripple effect, right? Because I'm in the middle of trying to do 12,000 other things. I don't need another one. Right. Or and six I, I get that. You know, I understand that. Uh, let me see here. Get some tests so you can test for mastitis. Mastitis. I don't even know what that is. Like booby stuff. Gypsy says, ripple effects. Start watching Life Done Free. Next thing you know, we're in Kansas. <laughs> oh. Wouldn't it be nice to be around a community where you guys could work together? Uh -huh. Well, you guys all go shopping together and create these ripple effects so that we can scramble. It's not yeah, really Nito says, scramble. losing the battle tag. Just ask Cubby. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good thing Tag likes to build things. Tag, she did you a favor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. How long has it been since you've had like fresh raw milk? Hey, Rhonda. Good evening. Um, it's been a little while. It's been you a little enjoy while. fresh raw milk, right? Wasn't that like something you looked forward to? When, yes, I grew up on when it. You, right. We didn't have store bought milk when I was growing up. And you would always talk about your mom scraping the cream off cream of off the top and sticking it on a bowl of peaches. Oh, it was so good. It was all warm. It was so good. <laughs> You know what, babe? If that's what you want, I will. You'll you'll go buy a cow. I'll Are you really going to go there? Take that stuff off and oh. put it on some peaches yeah. for you. Yeah. So I'll even grow you yeah. the peaches. Yeah. So next Friday, the conversation is going to be: she bought the cow, so Tag could have cream. Watch how this turns. And then I created my own ripple effect, but that she had confidence. I'll take care of it. That makes sense. <laughs> I like that. Let's uh -huh. do that. Tag, there's some old '50s and '60s videos on YouTube about. Uh, what was called grassland farming. You might want to check it out. Okay. Grassland farming. Jen says, I trust Miss Lou to be a better judge of lineage and the way she inspects the cow. Didn't mean she had to buy it. Well, I mean, once they, she saw it and, and Lou was impressed. <laughs> oh my goodness. I would only want A2A2 as well. So much easier on my gut. The hide is worth 800. Yeah, you guys keep selling. Like Santa, Tag has a load bearing lap. Yeah, clearly. Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, I'm not that far behind. 
I disagree with JB. Read about milk sharing. I know someone who does it with Dexter's. Only milk's in the morning and the calf gets the rest. Hmm. You know, milk once a day and the calf share isn't a thing. Okay. <laughs> Still cheaper than a BMW. Oh, there's a story there. You had a BMW. <laughs> you had a BMW once, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Because you just had to have it. Right? Just like the white Dexter. I mean, you have, you have to, to have, have a it. car. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness no joke tag my wife works with a lady um, that asked her if three thousand dollars was too much to spend on a purse congrats on your cow buying wife on a purse oh my goodness. a purse you tag, can't even eat it consider it an investment and the 20 percent extra will earn interest and within a couple of years your original investment will double Oh my goodness. We are start we are really starting to think Arkansas hates us and I was born here. Or maybe it's just you're not meant to be there, Jim. Maybe there's a different calling for you. <laughs> Let me see here. Barbie says, uh, how are you going to feed the calf? Is the calf going to suck on the cow? Yes. I hope so. I hope we're not feeding it at all. Um, thank you for your gracious donation. Did somebody donate to you, bud? I think that's awesome. There's his link tree. Yeah, wonderful. Starla says, Miss B, life done uh, free. I grew up on a dairy farm. Trust me, they can look pregnant and not be pregnant and milk twice a day at the same time. Mm -hmm. There's that link again. Calf, yeah. Warm cream, yikes. Yeah, when I was growing up, I grew up on a horse ranch, so my dad showed quarter horses all over the world. And um, but we milked, we had cows and goats and, you know, some of those things, but, but most of our milk came from milking a goat or a cow my whole life. And my, my, my mom would take that milk and she would put it in the fridge. So the cream wasn't warm, just so you know, but it would put the, I thought it was. no, she put the milk in the refrigerator in the, the refrigerator after sitting a while. Be, to the top. Yeah. And you'd have this thick thing of cream. And then we'd go outside to the fruit trees and pick whatever we had, apples or peaches or whatever it was. And my mom would put it on it. It was really, really good. Did she put, she didn't even put sugar in it, right? I think she was telling me about that. And I was thinking, that does not sound good. It was so good. Midwest Ribeye said, I wish I lived closer. I have 10 peach seedlings that need a new home. Oh, we would take every oh. one of them too. We would. It's always something. Mine likes jewelry. Yours likes 1200 pound manure spreaders. Potato, potato, potato. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Mario says, Tag, you need to check and see if the girl sitting next to you is wearing a mask. I think it's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Might be, buddy. <laughs> Might be. Uh, um, well, B, you can't really scrape cream. Uh, you kind of just scoop it off, you know? Yeah, um, that's kind of what I meant. Just yeah. kind of scrape it off the top. Yeah. You like. Yeah. Yeah. So I've seen purses for more than 3000 Yeah, no thanks. Yeah, Midwest no says thanks. 30 is too much. Yeah. To spend on a purse. In all seriousness, if you read the independent farmstead, they make a strong case for having a milk cow. Um, ruminants produce protein and fat. And you can feed the extra to pigs and have another food source. Yeah, I don't mind that. And again, you guys, you know, I bark at, not really bark. You know, you just give me crap. I give her crap like, about it. Because are you it, kidding because me? Guys, you brought it, a cow home? It really does create a ripple effect for me. Yeah. It does load things onto my plate. but And I know you're trying to get the community building done. I am. And now I'm like, hey, can I yeah. have a barn? Right, right. Can I have a drive through door and right. place to stack hay? And you're like, are you kidding me? Yeah. But it's kind of a compliment, right, in a lot of ways. So I'll get over it. I'll get her a barn built someday. One more rock says, yeah, B, we're not those kind of girls. Yeah. Um. I used to be, and until I realized oh, where no our food was friends. coming from. Yeah, do you read this? A tractor, then a truck, then a cow. What's coming next week? A barn. <laughs> I did get a tractor <laughs> and a truck mm -hmm. and a cow. Mm -hmm. And 30 turkeys. And chickens. And 30 new chickens. It was 25, 24. But um, yeah, we live on a farm. 
Yeah. Keep, keep digging. It's what I keep telling myself. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, I just, I don't, I don't know another way to produce for ourselves without actually producing for ourselves, you know? Yeah. Um, big kids. I've never seen a white Dexter. I have black, red, tan, and light Brown. I've never seen a white one until this. Yes. You know, so um, I'm having flashbacks to the turkey ordering last year, but look, you came through with a turkey coop. I know, but I'm busy. Yeah. You know, I'm absolutely busy. I've got a lot going on right now. Speaking of turkeys, we um, gave all of our turkeys away, except for the two Narragansetts that we were going to keep. And then I had to call Pip and ask her for one of the turkeys back because the five guineas were chasing the two rogue turkeys and really kicking their butts. And so I thought if I got a Tom back, he could help um, keep the two turkeys uh, a little safer, I guess. And now that I have Slater back, um, he is, he is getting his, he is getting his laps because those five guineas, and I'm not sure if, um, if this is a normal thing, but the guineas are really beating up the turkeys um, and don't touch the chickens no they don't bother the chickens whatso or the geese whatsoever it's the turkeys and i don't know if it's because their pens are right next to each other and so they like they chase each other back and forth uh, across the um the gate and so i think that they're you know they're like barnyard or bullies and so they're um as soon as I, if I open both doors on, on the same side of the, the fence, uh, the guineas will run out of their coop and into the turkey coop and just start pouncing on them. So I have to let the guineas out one side and then go around the barn to let the turkeys out the other side so that they're not. You know what I do? Right next to each other. I let the turkeys out and then I go feed the cows and I go mess around to the geese or whatever. And then I go back and let the guineas out because by then the turkeys are going. Just saying. Um, combat midwife says as a midwife, I think all babies are a blessing. Life is a blessing. It is a blessing. Right. I just yeah. wish that the ripple effect was a consideration along the way. I don't know how to consider the ripple effect. If without, I do good. Without um uh I mean, the, the, you, you kind of have to get it in order to make it a priority because otherwise it's not a priority and you're like, okay, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. I'll get to it because you, there's no, there's nothing that's pushing that that's driving that. And so you have the item and then you go, okay, now I have to put that on hold to get this thing taken care of. And so I think that it's kind of a, Cotton candy rainbows and Blessing. fairy farts. No, it's cotton candy rainbows and fairy farts. Glitter. And lots of glitter. Yeah, because sprinkles are for women. It's easy to consider. If I make this decision, what workload will this add to my husband's plate? Does he have time to add this to his plate right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 just it's just part of it though. <laughs> I don't know what that means. You have to start somewhere. You have to. If- oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, this was a good statement, by the way. So WA says lunch on the left and runt on the right. If there's a bump on her right side, she's pregnant. I learned that from Tracy. Interesting. It's just one more cow. Uh-huh. Lunch yeah. on the left, rump on the right. Runt. Lunch on the left here. Lunch on the left, runt on the right. If there's a bump on her right, she's pregnant. Huh. My wife wants gear. Gotta love it. John Willis just launched a limited edition micro rig. I was told as long as I got one for Jenny, I could have one too. Oh, that's not a bad deal. Yeah. B, uh, this is a good comment. B gave away turkeys and created Detroit on the homestead with the gangs. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah, we don't have a bull to breed her back, but um, we have great friends who have them. 
Eagle lovers, just look at it this way. You could have missed out on something wonderful if you didn't get her. That's uh, true. Yeah, I could have missed out on something wonderful because I didn't have the money to do it because we went and got her. <laughs> Details. <laughs> Can you breed the new cow to hippie after the calf? Yes. Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what do we got here? If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. Thorough. Yeah. You're not helping, though. Thank you, Mo. <laughs> Thank you, friend. Karen, good evening to you. Welcome. There's Unique Prepping's uh, link tree again. Again, we're trying to get him a um, computer bot that um, will allow him to do public speaking. Um, you know, some of his challenges with uh, cerebral palsy is the vocal part. And so we're working to get that. That's why I keep putting the link up. And I, um, if you guys can do it, it'd be great. Um, let me see here. I would have missed out on B's happiness. This is a big part of her healing process. Look at her glowing face when she talks about mm -hmm. Moo. Priceless. Yeah. Moo. Her face used to glow when she was talking about me and I've been replaced by a cow. No, I, my goal is still you. It's <laughs> to provide us with the, the nutrient dense food that we, our bodies need to. Gypsy says she'll buy the cow from you. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's funny about that. That is totally a bluff call moment because he's full of shit. Well, yeah, she's a looker. Did that's for sure. She is beautiful. Yeah. Did money just come out of your mouth? Freedom is more important. <laughs> you go be. Oh, Gypsy says that was Louise. Okay. I was going to say, there's no way Jeff said that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Hey, yeah, you should have heard Stan, their conversation evening. on the way back from picking her up because <laughs> she goes, well, if... If it's a boy, we can buy up the boy. And he goes, we don't need another boy. <laughs> Nito says tag. Hubby says grow set of horns. <laughs> he doesn't need any horns. <laughs> All right. What's next he on your needs, list? Enough cow talk. He needs fresh, nutrient-dense food is what we need. Yeah, we hope that she has a white calf as well. Yes, we hope that she has a white calf boy or girl yeah gregory you're 100 right either, sometimes you just got to deal with it either way we're keeping it <laughs> what else you got um so i got new chicks new cow yeah. yeah um gypsy told me to go get the tractor we already talked about all that mm -hmm. um <clears throat> i have a nephew getting married tomorrow that's pretty cool yeah we um we're gonna go we were my intent was to go to the ceremony and uh, see my family members and then found out that my mom is sick. And <laughs> that, that that's not your mom. Super sick, sick. And is in the hospital. Um, she is talking now. So that's good. Um, we found out that she choked on something and aspirated and was found unresponsive and they got her uh, stabilized. They intubated her and sedated her. So she would quit trying to mess with her tubes. Um, but today they took the uh, tubes out. She was very hoarse, but talking and um, not able to uh, have anything by mouth. So she's um, hungry and thirsty and unhappy about it. <laughs> um, we, I will probably not go to the wedding because um, just trying to take care of stuff. And so if you're listening, we hope that the wedding goes great. We are thinking of you guys and love you very much. And more importantly, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for growing up. I'm proud of you for breaking the cycle. So if you're listening, just know we're proud of you. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, we realize that life is short mm -hmm. and we need to um, be around the ones that we love and take all of the good things from them and uh, memories and uh, life lessons and learn from them and love each other hard. And wow, that reminds me of that one guy says that hmm. love them hard. Love them hard. Yeah. Um, and he's an interesting guy. Yeah. Love them hard. The, the, she's talking about a guy that we know who uh, him and his wife were, um, you know, mild high school, home, sweethearts. high school sweethearts, mild, mild homesteaders, heavy preppers. And they did it all together. And then she got cancer and died. And he really struggled with purpose after that. Yeah. Why? And, uh, yeah. And why? Why am I even doing all of this stuff? And when I asked him his, what his advice would be to everybody, his advice was love them hard. Mm -hmm. Quote. Yep. So pretty interesting. And what, yeah. when, what a great quote. Yeah. You mean to go? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> I found some interesting articles as I always do. Let's start off with Kansas a little bit. So Kansas is getting ready to start a road usage charge pilot program. So Kansas is exploring how to pay per mile road usage charge, which could potentially replace the current gas tax. So what they're saying is they could charge you per mile you drive. Right? Makes sense? For Kansas. For Kansas. Instead of, well, there's a lot of places doing this, but this, yeah. But they're talking about this. So this isn't actually the reason why I even wanted to bring this up today was this. But so this got me searching a little bit. So what I wanted to know was how would they actually do that? Would it be a, a GPS signal, right? Uh, how would they actually do it? And so I was curious if somebody had a patent on, you know, something like that. And after a little bit of searching, I didn't find the answer to this question. But look what I found. So in the United States Patent Application Office, Ford Global, if you look, that's the applicant, Ford Global Technologies, so Ford, out of Michigan, patented systems and methods to repossess a vehicle. Now listen to this. In some cases, the vehicle can be an autonomous vehicle and the repossession systems computer may cooperate with the vehicle computer um, to autonomously move the vehicle from the premises um, of the owner to a location such as, for example, the premises of the repossession agency, the president, the premises of the lending institution, an impound yard, or any other pre-designated location. The address of such locations can be loaded previously stored in the database of the repossessed system. So what they're saying is they can put uh, software in the computer. Chips. Of, your, of the car when they sell it. And if they're going to repo it, they can just turn it on and it, and it can drive by itself to the repo yard. So they don't even have to send a repo man anymore. <laughs> Good grief. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing what happens when you start uh, researching a little bit, you know? Yep. JB says one more way to monitor your driving. Yep. Insurance company have those stupid plug-in things to log your driving. I will never participate in that. Yeah. I know somebody who does. Yeah, Gypsy says if they do that, they better fix the roads. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it reminds me, um, somebody gave us their um, a way to watch the Obama movie. Mm -hmm. And in that movie. We did watch was, it, by the way. We yeah. did watch it. It was stupid. And there was uh, the vehicles that were driving by themselves. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. The Teslas. She was, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, Arkansas raised the annual tax on electric and hybrids after formally giving credits to buy them because they use the road the same and we make less on gas tax. <laughs> yeah. Love runs Ram said, I've heard, I heard this ridiculous invasion of privacy. So corrupt. Yep. New cars have computers. Now the OnStar can cut the engine and start it and unlock it. hundred percent. Hey Jules, thanks for that link again to the Anyway, I found that super interesting. I don't know what will happen to it. That's crazy. So you, I'm sure you guys heard about the bridge that collapsed. Yes. I'd love to um, hear what everybody's thoughts are. I've watched the video a couple times. And um, this guy, the, the writing that's on the screen, and I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but uh, basically multiple intel sources, Baltimore Bridge collapse was absolutely brilliant strategic attack on the U.S. critical infrastructure. 
most likely cyber and our intelligence agencies know it in information uh, warfare terms. They just divided the U.S. along the Mason-Dixon line exactly like the Civil War. The second busiest strategic roadway in the nation for hazardous material now down for four to five years, which is how long they say it will take to recover. The bridge was built specifically to move hazardous material, fuel, diesel, propane, gas, nitrogen, highly flammable materials, chemicals, and oversized cargo that cannot fit into the tunnels that supply chain now crippled. Make no mistake, this was an extraordinary attack in terms of planning, timing, and execution. The two critical components on that bridge are the two load-bearing pylons on each end closest to the shore. They are bigger, thicker, and deeper than anything else. These are the anchor points, and they knew that hitting either one of them would be a, a fatal wound to the integrity of the bridge. A half mile of bridge went into the river. Likely, you will have to build a new one. Um, also caused so much damage to the structural integrity of the bottom concrete port that you cannot see and won't know until they take the wreckage apart. Anyway, I'm curious to hear about what you guys think about all this. Did you hear that, um, I guess, the Simpsons, they were talking of, there was a episode of a boat mm. hitting a bridge and it coming down. Yes, the Simpsons have been fairly predictive in a lot of things. Isn't that crazy? Mo says, people think the boat that hit the Baltimore Bridge was remoted. The experts say the tech was already installed. Yeah, well, I watched the video a whole bunch of times, and it sure looks like to me it just didn't accidentally drift into it. It looks didn't like didn't it, it like turn around? Yeah, it looks like it turned into it. Um, the Obama movie also predicted the Baltimore Bridge collapse. I don't remember that part, and I watched it. Yeah, Love runs ramp and says the bridge is an hour and fifteen away from me. I heard it was in a movie before. Same exact bridge, and inflation will be worse. Yeah. Mm. Also, four ships used by the military to transport equipment and supplies. At Tambor, that's what I was thinking. It looked like the ship turned and headed into the bridge. That's what I thought, too. Um, I never realized that the U.S. takes nuclear waste from Europe until someone on the Survival Podcast Telegram group said it, and he transports the nuclear waste that lives in Tennessee. Ugh. Um, I think that it was all... I think it was all... Mike says eight. 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 <laughs> I have no idea what that means. You think it's eight? Like all eight up? I have no idea. Also, I'm curious who is now stuck in the port. Yeah, I actually read a little bit about that. They were saying that there was a bunch of cargo ships out now that they were going to have to find a different port. Um, read the most important two minutes of the black box recording was missing. Of course it would be. Oh. Right? Of course. What a mess, huh? Man, we're an hour and 32. I got to get hustling through this. Did you guys hear that in Oregon, as in Oregon enforces its water usage requirements, small farmers face the consequences? <clears throat> Christina Del Campo surveys her field, <coughs> pointing out the garlic she hopes to grow um, on it in the blueberries that she'll no longer be able to sell. This section of field, I don't know if I'll ever plant it, she said. I'm potentially going to just put cover crop and build up the soil where I live um, in limbo and see what's going to happen with the water rights. <clears throat> this Oak Song Farm, a property located off Lorraine Highway near Eugene, with over a half an acre of dedicated agriculture. For the last seven years, DeCampo used her well water to grow vegetables there, which she sold at the farmer's market and to her neighbors. She said that's been her primary source of income. It's like a convenience store, said Del Campo. People can stop in. I see a lot of people come on Sunday morning to grab fixings for their breakfast. However, everything changed last September when the Oak Song Farm received a letter from the regional office of the Oregon Water Resources Department. It was a notification that the farm couldn't irrigate its commercial crops without a water right. Del Campo said that this came as a complete surprise. Today, she said her business has been essentially destroyed. I don't know why growing food is illegal, she says. That's what doesn't make sense to me. They go on to say that the water is a publicly owned resource in Oregon, meaning that property owners need government approval for many of its uses. <laughs> and the main reason I brought this up is this, the last line in there. Anything publicly owned means you need government permission. Right? Absolutely crazy. You see here, Mike says, I've been on board a ship that lost power. We dropped anchor 
to slowed uh, to a stop. We had to wait for part to be flown out to repair prior to getting underway again. Mike, would, did you watch the the bridge collapse? And would you say that would be a normal maneuver? I'd be interested. The way that drifted. Yeah. Hey, Crunchy Mama Farms is here. You guys, a great couple um, down in Texas and doing everything right. Look at that cow. Yeah, look at that cow. I really hope that the Oregon gardeners just decide to keep on gardening. I, I really hope so, too. And just don't listen to them. But, I mean, it's crazy when, you know, we get into this. It's the individualism, you know, versus what's for the better good of all, right? And in this particular case, the water belongs to the government. Guys, I'm telling you, if it, they say it's publicly owned, it means it's owned by the government. Hey, Crunchy Mama, are you coming to Midwest Preparedness? Oh, I hope you guys are. Idaho just passed something similar um, within the last year. Yeah. Water, water, water. If they can turn off your water, yeah. you are screwed. Yep. When I bought my land, I made sure the water and mineral rights were included. Yep. If they can control the food, they control the people. Yep. So does that mean falling from the sky also? Because that's what they're talking about, right? Right. She, ha you ha she has to have the the rights to use the water that's coming from the. Right. Right. She has to get their permission. Yeah. None should listen to them. I agree. The shipwreck looked like fifth generation warfare to me, but what do I know? I'm just a, a coincidence theorist. Coincidence. Theorist. It's a coincidence. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> the ship had been having electrical issues for weeks before crashing. It should have mm -hmm. never been allowed to leave port. It would depend on if they drop the anchor. That could cause the turn. Oh, mm -hmm. to pull it. We can come this fall. Need the dates. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if the fall one's scheduled yet. The the spring one's coming up here in May. We'll make sure you get them. We'd love to see you. Yeah, we would love to see you. Um, What else is next? Oh, you guys are going to laugh at me, right? So I thought this was going to be the first live ever that I quoted a Bible verse. Oh, because, you know, I'm weird about that. Right. I, yeah. So because I was job. yeah, I was watching and um, th this came on. I, I snip clipped it instantly because I found it so fascinating. But they were saying that the Bible quote, what was the name of the, the book, babe? You what? had to help me with that. Esca Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastics. Ten to. So what they said was that the Bible verse said the heart of the wise inclines to the right, but the heart of the fool to the left. I'm like, well, that's interesting. But before I did it, I said, hey, I'm going to research it and make sure that's actually what it says. Probably smart. <laughs> you know? So I found out that the old King James Version said a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. When the New International Version removed the word hand from that sentence or from that verse. So I'm not going to quote one tonight. So that's that. But I will tell you it is important to understand what you're quoting, right? Because these are all different versions. Um, you can see that's actually my Google search. I just clipped it, right, <laughs> and put it on there. But I think it's absolutely crazy how you can change it like that, which to me changes the whole meaning of the verse. Yeah. Um, so I won't be quoting one tonight, just so everybody knows. <laughs> um, yep, no bam. Life, Mike and Jen, no bam. I, I thought I had one that I was going to, but nope. Oh, there you go. The dates for the Midwest Paranus Festival is September 4th through the 8th. That's here, the fall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, here in Nebraska, we have water rights for irrigation. The surface water, river, and irrigation well regulated by the state. Rain is still free. Yeah, for a little bit, right? Yeah, anyway, so I'm not going to get that one done. But I thought I was going to. Oh, here's some fun stuff. You ready to be excited? Yeah. You are you? I was ready to be motivated and positive? I was excited with the blue cow. Yeah, I'm about to make even more positive. So we just passed a $1.5 trillion spending bill. And in that $1.5 trillion spending bill, I thought we could spend a little time talking about where that money goes. I'm, gonna, I'm sure that um, all of you in the audience today have read the bill and are completely Probably familiar with it. Word. But you haven't felt good. So we thought, me and the community thought we'd bring you up to speed. How do you okay. feel about that? Sure. Okay. So $13.6 billion in aid for Ukraine, $20 billion for climate resiliency programs, $1.45 billion for southern border response. And I think it's interesting they show a fence. You agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. $17.2 billion for child care and early childhood education, $726 billion for defense. This is on top of the, the normal budget. 
This is the largest raise in national defense spending ever in the history. And then, of course, nine point seven billion for five thousand individual pro, you know, projects, pork projects, right? You know how they fund the field mice studies here and this and that. So I'm going to get into some of that. I'm going to break down every one of these. But before we go through the budget, I think it was really, really important um, that I remind everybody the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 8 says, the Congress shall have the power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises, to pay the debt and to provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imports, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. So what I want you guys to understand and what I want everybody to take from this is a couple of very important words in here. The first one is general, right? That we, they should provide for the common defense and general welfare, not specific welfare. They specific, general. right? General welfare, but that also it shall be uniform. So what they're saying is, is that, saying. that it's okay to, to, to levy taxes for the general welfare in a uniformed approach. Okay. You don't get that? Yeah. What is why? That's what it says right there. Yeah. What don't you get? You gave me a look like you don't, that didn't make sense to you. Go ahead. Okay. So I just want you to remember this as we go through these next few slides. Okay. Okay. Before we get into the slides, though, I wanted to show you guys that this bill was passed by the House of Representatives. Okay. And it's headed on um, and it was going to get all the way through. Everybody's going to get funded. But this is where it began. And just keep in mind that the House, the, the balance of power, there's 222 Republicans and 213 Democrats. Okay. So I want you guys to know something. Only 30 Republicans voted against this bill. 30. Wow. Of 222, 30. So next time you go and rah, 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 Republican, and they're going to save the world, they are just as bad as the Democrats. They're doing it too. And I'll, I can prove it to you. Okay. And just so you know, since we're on that topic, I wanted to show you guys that here is the U.S. debt um, and how it's risen over time and how it's risen. The Reds Republicans, <laughs> the Blues Democrats. It don't make any difference. If you see that little black dot, uh, jagged line in there, that's every time they raised the debt limit. OK, so if you look at 1990, it's trucking along about 2000. It picks up pretty good. 2010, right? 2020. And then obviously it skyrockets. So you tell me, based on this, that the Republicans are coming to save anybody. Right? They're just as just as guilty as everybody else. Okay, so let's talk about the $13.6 billion for the Ukraine. In legislation passed Wednesday by the House, it would provide $13.6 billion to help Ukraine resist the Russian invasion. And the buttress NATO allies worried about uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin's next move. There's money for weapons and equipment and humanitarian aid for refugees and alienations economies, and for the U.S. cost of bolstering its military presence in the region. Now, wait, what did they just say? So they put $13.6 billion so that Russia can buy weapons and equipment, right? Who do they get their weapons and equipment from? Us. Us. So they gave $13.6 billion to the Ukrainians so that they can spend that money with Raytheon and with all of our military. So this money just comes back to the United States and the defense contract. Right. That's money that's coming back to the U.S. in the military industrial complex. Right. In the world of foreign aid, 13.6 billion is real money. By comparison, the measure also includes 3.3 billion in military assistance for Israel. Long a top recipient of such help. There's 1.6 billion for Jordan and 1.3 billion for Egypt. So, you know what this really that's says to money. me? Well, then they're not getting any. This money is all being washed through, turned around and sent back to the U.S. military industrial complex. This is all going to government spending. It's all going to military spending. But didn't I say they raised the military spending? Yeah. Apparently they raised it some more. Right? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Is that just me? No. Nope. Yep. How about $20 billion for climate resiliency programs? Lawmakers set aside more than $20 billion for climate research and resiliency efforts. The National uh, Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration would see an 8% increase so they got an 8% raise over last year. Wow, right? Um, elsewhere, the Commerce Department, Congress provided a 24% boost to the Assistance to Coal Communities Program, which is helping them with live without the coal, right? Getting us into a green world. But wait, what else did it get? The Defense Department. 
Interior Department and loan programs to state and local governments would also see higher spending. So they got the Defense Department some of that money too. This is their words, not mine. <laughs> right? I don't make this shit up. Hey, Hacks, good evening to you. Jay Johns, good evening to you. Let's see if I got everybody in here. Isn't that interesting? We'll just throw some more back there. What about $1.45 billion for the southern border response? And it shows, their own graphic shows offense. Because they know you're too stupid and you're not actually going to read it. The Homeland Security Package will provide nearly $62 billion in total discretionary resources to Homeland Security, which was the most contentious of the appropriation bills that lawmakers were negotiating. It would include nearly $59 billion for non-defense programs and more than $3 billion for defense-related programs. So they get $3 billion more. Right? Crazy. U.S. Customs and Border Patrols would receive nearly $20 billion, an increase of $3 billion from the prior year. So the Border Protection got a raise, too. Did you get a raise this year? It would provide $495 million to bring the number of Border Patrol agents to 22,000, the highest number ever funded, and $20 million to hire an additional 150 officers to support counter-fentanyl efforts. It would bolster funding for, now listen to this, it will bolster funding for processing capacity, medical care, and the support of children's well-being, but does not provide money for a border wall. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. It also increases the funding for Transportation Security Administration personnel by more than a billion. So what? Let's, let's break this apart real quick. So they're gonna they got funding got for processing capability, medical care, the support of children's well-being, and more transportation. That's what it says. Right? U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement would receive close to $10 billion. More than $221 million would be provided for transportation and removal operations of people. What is going on? You are in oh. trouble. My phone is just going off. Okay. Let's go on to something positive, right? Since we're talking about the border. New York begins handing out prepaid debit cards to illegal aliens, mm. right? Illegals will get 40% more. So an illegal is going to get an average of $12.52 a day when Americans on SNAP get $7.59. New York will now spend uh, $1.5 billion on illegal services. Um, the program will provide illegal families of four um, or with two children up to $350 each week until the end of their stay. Taxes, uh, says, where's the money going to come from? Well, the taxes are raised on the U.S. citizens, the state borrowers, and money and has to pay it back later with interest, take money away from some other program. According to the estimates, illegal immigration will cost U.S. taxpayers $150 billion this year. With free shelter, health care, mental, mental health care, legal help, ID cards, free English class, and public education. The $53 million that they plan to spend on the illegal alien pilot program is more than the Department of Veteran Affairs at $21 million. Wow. So they're spending twice what they're doing for the veterans, right? The Office of National Community Service at $18 million, the Division of Human Rights at $25 million, or the City's Cancer Services Program at $19.8 million. But I know what you guys are saying. There's just not that many illegals. Don't worry about it, right? The number, this is a great graph. This is the number of apprehensions of undocumented immigrants at the U.S. southern border by origin, which I found was super interesting. So if you look, the green is Mexican and the yellow is others. So as you can look, this very last graph is 2022, right? And so there's way more coming across that border that others. are not Mexican that are Mexican. And obviously the 2023 or would 2024. be higher. Right. And 2024 would be any higher, right? And just since I got you guys all, all worked up, we're just going to keep on a track. And so remember I told you there was going to be $17.2 billion that we're going to use for child care and early childhood education. Did you know that part of that is what's called grooming, bonding, and tucking, which they are, some of this money is going to go to the development of special LGBTQ underwear and bras so that they can tuck and hide. No joke. And we can't forget the little bit of money that they're going to, you know, spend all over so that they can develop LGBTQ senior housing. Oh my God. Isn't it interesting that we put bonding, grooming, bonding, and tucking the development of LGBTQ underwear and bras and LGBTQ senior housing underneath okay. child care and early childhood education. That's not, that's not, that's not funny. No, it's not. Man, we're on a roll tonight, huh? 
What is wrong with this country? I know I'm just rambling. Let's what keep is it. wrong with this country? Yeah, yeah. All right, let's keep it trucking. Now, don't forget, we got a whole bunch of money for the defense, defense right? Let's look at what's actually in the bill. So, seven hundred and twenty-six billion is going to national defense, the largest increase in twenty years. The package would provide three hundred million for the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative to aid the nation against the Russian aggression. But wait a second, I thought the other part was giving to Ukraine. Right. I think we're going to give it here so that then we can invest back in the military industrial complex and sell some more weapons, probably, right? The funding is separate from the larger assistance package for the Ukraine that is currently bogged down in capital here. So what they're saying is there's a whole other bill coming with a whole bunch of more aid that will go to the Ukraine, which will then get spent back in the United States with our military industrial complex, right? Lovely. But just to put this into perspective, so if you look in 2022, the United States spent $801 billion on national defense. This $726 billion is on top of that. This is the raise they got. So during the entire year of 2022, they spent $801 billion. And to put that into perspective, that is more than South Korea, Japan, Saudi Arabia, Germany, France, Russia, United Kingdom, India, and China spend combined. Mm. And they got a $726 billion raise. That makes sense. And then you wonder why your wonder why your taxes are going up. I'm confused. I must just be confused, everybody. Now, don't forget the 9.7 billion, right? All of the special projects. Did you know they're going to give some money for the Baltimore Symphony? What about um, what about two million dollars to the University of Maine for the construction of a kelp and shellfish nursery, or three hundred eighty-eight thousand to Columbia University, right, to their endowment fund? Right, or how about a bunch of money to study whether fish that drank tequila were more aggressive than sunfish that drank gin? Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, how about a million dollars for the Cambridge, Massachusetts Community Center to install solar panels? So they right? can operate off grid. Yep, twenty four million to Martha's Vineyard. You guys ever heard that? Where's Martha's Vineyard? I know that's heard. I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> right. Oh, here's the best one. How about a bunch of money to the city of New York so they can expand? It doesn't make nope. a whole lot of I'm sense. I'm back. There, I think I'm back. Oh, my goodness. That was really weird. I oh, look at that now. It's flipping through. Oh, yeah. Something's weird. I don't think they liked what I was saying. That's what I think. Well, since <laughs> since we're um, <laughs> on it, don't forget, the Const Constitution says in Article 1, Section 8, the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duty, imposts, and excises to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and the general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises must be uniform throughout the United States. Hmm. Yeah. They have so, to launder somehow. So it's like this so is just a way to do this. All of those little projects, is that for the general well-being? Is it a uniform approach? Anyway. Yeah, something happened. I don't think I don't think they were very happy with all that. I don't care. Now I don't even know where I am because it all happened so fast. What do you think of all that, B? Yeah, it started flipping through a bunch of screens there. Yeah. Okay. I think I about got to it. Okay. Uh, hey, MJ. Good to see you. You got in at a very good time. Um, let's see here. Freezing up. You better stop talking. Not weird. You're totally right. Yeah. Yep. So what do you guys think of all this craziness? By the way, can everybody hear me now? Because on my end, it's, it seems to be fine. Well, I think a couple things are very interesting about this. Is that if we're going to double the military budget, basically, right? If we're going to um, 
put do studies on fish like that and donate to the orchestra or the the orchestra and we're going to send money to the ukraine and we're going to do we're going to study lgbq underwear which everybody needs underwear i don't know why it's such a big deal um if we're going to do all of these kind of things it must be the economy's rocking right we got some extra money they care about you and what they're doing is just you know moving us along right because everything's fine right hey leather homestead how are you Good to see you. Well, let's see what else is going on. A new report from Zillow says American households need to make at least $106,000 a year to comfortably afford a typically priced U.S. home. That's up from $59,000 in 2020. As this is only 2024, four years ago, the average American could buy the average house with an income of $59,000. It'll now take one hundred and six. dollars That's a tough task. Um, for many, considering the median U.S. household earns an estimated 81000 which is up from 65000 in 2020. So the average um, household income in 2020 was 65000 It's grown to 81000 The average home cost 59000 and has grown to 106000 The income needed to be comfortably afford a home is up 80% from 2020, while the median income has risen 23% during that time. Yeah, that's nuts. They're not going at the same rate. They're not. All in the last three years, not the last 15 to 30 years. Guys, those are the numbers. The price of groceries are up on average 21%, eating out 21%, baby food 29%. Now, don't forget, they told you that the average income has gone up 23%. Isn't that ironic? And yet the cost, if you did an average on all of those, I bet it's right about 23%. <laughs> you want to bet? I bet I, it is. I didn't average them out, but I'll bet you it's not far off that. If somebody gets bored, I'd love to uh, hear, hear what the average is between all of those. Maybe 25%, right? So which basically means nobody makes any more money is what that really means. Right. Right? Yeah. A droid Homestead says, did you end up watching the movie Leave the World Behind? I did watch it, and it was a horrible movie, and the ending sucked. I wasn't impressed at all. <laughs> what do you think? I thought that it was pretty interesting, the stuff that they were bringing up. Just conspiracy theories, cons- you know, mm-hmm. talking about the cabal, talking mm-hmm. about the... Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting. Uh, for those of you people who are on fixed incomes, you know, who are getting Social Security, which, by the way, you earned, right? You paid in your whole life for it, right? Um but isn't that interesting how they say the average income over that time went up 23%? I bet yours didn't. Because if yours had gone up 23%, right, then if you if yours income would have gone on that, they would have had to keep up with inflation. The payments would have been more. They purposely keep you keep all of that tucked in, right? They don't want to pay anymore. In fact, they want you off of it as quick as they can. They just prefer you died. What about this? Californians could see up to $128 fixed charge added to their monthly electric bill. The monthly charge would be assessed regardless of any energy conservation efforts. So even if you have solar, right? Let's say you have solar in your home and you're selling back to the grid. You're going to get the bill anyway. Makes no difference. How crazy is that? 18 California congressional representatives wrote a letter to the Public Utilities Commission warning that proposed changes would harm the low and the middle class. Guys, energy is going to be a big deal. A big deal. Yep, this is how they control you. This is how the grip tightens. Gen Z has 86% less purchasing power than baby boomers did in the 20s. In their 20s. Absolutely crazy. 86%. Oh, I'm trying to rush through these so I get them all. Um, I don't know if you guys know this or not. But did you know that they actually created a politically a political instability task force to study civil war and what the effects of civil war would be? They're just trying to change the change what we know from our studies. No, what they're studying is what's the potential for a future civil war mm. and what would the outcomes be? And so they studied a lot of that kinds of you know that type of stuff. And some things that I found were super, super interesting is that um, really what it came down to was that if a democracy was a partial democracy, it was most likely to end up in a civil war. And what I mean by a, a partial democracy is where you go and vote, 
but once you vote, they kind of have total control. You know what I mean? They do kind of whatever they want, which is kind of what we're experiencing. They do anyway. And when they, they studied a lot of them, they call that um, an anocracy, an anocracy or semi-democracy. Um, but I, so I thought I would take this a little bit further and I would say, okay, is America really as divided? And as you guys know that it is, but I thought I would show you guys some statistics to see how divided are we? Half of Americans anticipate the U.S. in a civil war survey finds. <laughs> Half. Remember that Half. number. Retired general warns U.S. military could back a coup after the 2024 election. As the anniversary of the insurrection at the U.S. Capitol approaches, three retired U.S. generals have warned that another insurrection could occur after the 2024 presidential election and that the military could support it. Interesting. Yeah, these are the conditions right for political violence. How close is the U.S. to a civil war? Americans are increasingly talking about civil war. In August, the FBI raided Donald Trump's Florida home. Twitter references to civil war jumped over 3,000%. So the searches online jumped 3,000% after they raided Trump's. When was this? When was This is back when they raided his Mar-a-Lago place. 2022? 2023, I think. So this is the argument that people are making. I actually found this online. I couldn't hardly believe it. But the strengths for the right and the left. The left controls 70% of the wealthiest countries or counties, controls basically every institution in every field. They control tech. They're the deep state, more foreign support. The right uh, controls the military, typically leans right, warlike culture, centralized geography, more young men, controls resources, and controls manufacturing. Do you agree with that? So basically what they're saying is, that, you know, the right's got more guns, more young men, more, um, you know, resources. The left's got the tech, right? They got more money, basically. So I went and looked further and said, okay, since 2000, how did people vote? And so if you look at the blue line, that is who voted Democrat. So like if you look in 2000, 42% were voting Democrat, 47% were voting Republican. And that kind of changed over time um, up into 2023. You know, Republicans have pretty much been underneath the Democrats really since 2000 and didn't cross until 2022 when now it's 44 to 43, but look how close that is. Yeah. Right. When you talk about the divide. Hey, Helen, good evening to you. So I thought I'd look into the gun thing a little more. Did you know that the estimated number of firearms per 100 residents in the United States is 120? Look at the closest one next to it. Yemen. Yemen. Of all places, Yemen, 52.8. So I thought I would take a look would at Would you have guessed that? <clears throat> I would have guessed the U.S., but I would not have guessed the Yemen. But so I thought I would start take a look at a couple of these maps and see if they, how they all lined up. So the percent who owns gun, if you guys look, the darker the color, the more percentage of firearm ownership there is <clears throat> in the state. But what you'll notice is see how all the light colors are on the edges. Right. See all these light colors be Maine yeah. and all these right here's where all the light colors are. Mm -hmm. California which fewer gun owners, right? You get into the center of the United States, it's more, right? Keep Just keep that in your mind. Um, I'm going to skip this one because we're going to run out of time. This here, guys, is the map of exactly how um, everybody voted in the last presidential election. I know you guys have probably seen this map before, but the red is Republican, the blue is Democrat, right? right. Again, look out on the edges, Yeah. right? Here are the states that are supporting Texas, right? And look at the edges. Yeah. Right, same map. Um, oh, this was super fascinating. Oh, yeah. What's wrong with Nebraska? Nebraska? I yeah, couldn't I believe that, that number was that low. I know, right? This was such an interesting one. So if you guys look at the blue line, this is the well-being index. This is the government's numbers themselves, right? So the well-being index, if you look at it, so in 1780, so just not long after the American Revolution, you could see that the blue line kind of increased and incre increased right up to about 1820 when it began to fall. And when it hits its bottom in 1860, can anybody remember what happened in 1860? Oops, sorry. Let me go back. Can anybody remember what happened in 1860? That was the beginning of the Civil War. Civil War. Yep. So then the Civil War comes and then that blue line, you know, the well-being index begins to climb again, right? And you can actually see it climb right through. There's World War I. There's World War II, right? They're climbing right through it. They get up to a peak and then it begins to crash in about 1965, 70-ish, Right is when it really begins to crash and it comes all the way down. If you look at the red lines, this is the political stress in index, which I also think is pretty interesting. So if you look back during the, the Revolutionary War, right, it was pretty flat. 
um, and the stress just peaked in about 1840, right? And guess what happened in 1860? The Civil War, Civil War, right? And then it works its way back down and look what's going on right now, right? That divide between, um, you know, uh, the, the political stress index is what they call it. So if you look at the, the well-being index and the political stress index, I think that's an interesting note. I got another one to show you guys here. This is it broken down actually into categories. I don't know why I like reading this stuff. Um, so if you look, so I'm going to start with the blue line, which is employment. So basically, this is that same well-being uh, index, but these are the measures that goes into it. So the blue line, if you look back about the Revolutionary War, right, it kind of goes up, goes up, and it crashes right about 1860. Which, what happened in 1860? Civil the War. The Civil War, right? And so it muddles there, then it goes all the way back up and look at what it's doing. It's crashing again. So let's look, look at wages, okay? Wages go up, go up, go up. They crash right about the Civil War. Following the green line, it goes and peaks up. All of it's down. The only one of these numbers that isn't doing that is health, which I also find interesting. So you got the Revolutionary War, right? You've got the crash that comes down to the bottom and it comes back up and kind of flattens out. But all, four of the five metrics that they use in the well-being mm -hmm. uh, measures are following that exact same trend. Right as what happened during the first civil war. I know I'm weird, right? No, that, that slides in the wrong place. Here's another one I think is super, super interesting. And you might not think it is, but why do you guys suppose that young male virginity is on the rise? The share of men under the age of 30 who report zero female partners since they turned 18 is skyrocketed. What does that tell you? I think this has a lot to do with what's going on right now. You know, they're not getting out They're on, you know, it's the cell phone, it's separating, it's the demasculinity of males, it's, you know, all of the things that have gone on. And I think this is a great sign that your society's in trouble. What do you think? Maybe because they're confused on what gender they are. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. They're too busy gaming instead of dating. Gaming. Yeah. It's because women are identifying as cats. Ah, gotcha. Not sure how they get their numbers for those maps, as most of us aren't just out advertising what we own. Yeah, who knows? And again, I'm just pulling the stuff. You right know, off the internet. Right, right. Right. So I don't even know that any of these graphs are true. But I find that super interesting. All right, guys. Man, look at that. Two hours and seven minutes. I want to remind everybody that um, the Midwest Parentist Project is coming up. Um, B and I will go live uh, 3 p.m. on Saturday. Um, from there and we're going to do some we're going to have some fun you know I think what we're going to do is talk about the history of this whole community and how it all began work our way through it I'm hoping to get a bunch of people to join me on stage that have played you know a big role in all of that and uh anyway I'm super super excited G Johns for the win says or they just don't know what a woman is <laughs> sorry I had to <laughs> you know anyway Anyway, I wanted to introduce you guys to somebody tonight, if you guys don't mind. So this is the combat midwife. I had an amazing conversation um, with her. And this is a girl who, I'll, I'll just read it to you. Um, Jessica, the combat midwife, has trained over 50,000 United States Army combat medics, in addition to flight medics, special forces medic teams, and tens of thousands of midwives and emergency medical service professionals. She's a midwife, paramedic, and EMS educator who has a passion for training individuals, families, communities, local governments, and self-reliant, what's that word? Ob okay. Obstetrics. Obstetrics, gynecology, and pediatric emergencies. Jessica's instruction and training expertise regardless, uh, regarding obstetrics okay. and gynecology emergencies and how to navigate the out-of-hospital um, birth transfer has been published in EMS World Magazine. She's delivered babies in a plethora of out of hospital environments to include a tent in an Afghan refugee camp. Jessica's approach is fast paced, but nurturing her training allows a wide range of individuals to become self-reliant in delivering babies and caring for our most vulnerable patients. Mm -hmm. So her and I had this just great um, conversation mm -hmm. about um, being self-reliant and girls needs and that, you know, girls needs are very different in a lot of cases. And so, her and I have discussed um, the idea of putting in a girl garden and, you know, some of these other things. But anyway, um, Jessica is going to be on the show here coming up pretty quick. And we're going to talk. I can't even believe I'm doing this right. 
because I'm a guy and guys are weird about these things, but we're going to talk about girl health. I, I don't, it don't make me feel uncomfortable to talk about it. It's that I don't know anything about it. Other that's than I've been, okay. ma- I mean, I've been married the whole time. Right. right. But, but I mean, okay. no matter what anybody says, I don't, guys, I'm telling you, boys will never know what it's like to be pregnant. You can try to explain it, but there is no way that we can rationalize with what it's like to grow a human being in our side of us. Right. They right. just can't. Yeah. So anyway, B will be in the conversation with us. I can assure you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Cause I, you know, I'll just sit there quiet drinking my chocolate milk, but um, I'm really looking forward to talking to Jessica. I think we're going to have a great conversation. Um, she's very like-minded, um, very community-based. And, um, you know, I think there may come a day where we need these kinds of skills. So um, I would love it if you guys would help me welcome Jessica. And uh, we're going to get her on the show here, hopefully coming up here pretty soon. And uh, anyway, I wanted to introduce you guys to her. You can see I, I included the link down there at the bottom. Um, I don't know any of you mods out there. Can you copy and paste that link out of the bottom of my slide? And put it in there so if people want to go over and check her out, they can. So she has her own YouTube channel. Yeah. She has her own YouTube channel. Um, I think she's newer to YouTube, but she's got some other stuff. I think it's Instagram. She's got a website um, and all of those kind of things. Um, but uh, anyway, I think you guys should go support her. I'm going to do my best, too. I'm looking yeah. forward to having the conversation with her. And um, I'm really looking forward to where it goes. You know, again, it's going to be an interesting topic, but I don't think it's something we talk about enough. Right. You know, because there are very different needs, you know, and so I'm super excited. Um, I'm going to let this run here a little bit because they'll get that link up there pretty quick here. Yeah, those chats usually are pretty behind. Let me see here. Oh, oh there it is right there. Did you, oh, sorry. I just slipped over the wrong slide. There you go. So I'm going to leave that link up there just a little bit. Thank you, Jules. Yeah, thank you, Jules. Jules is usually right on top of it. Yeah. You know, she's kind of a moderator she's, badass. She's fast. <laughs> yeah. But we had a great conversation and I look forward to learning more from her. And uh, oh, yeah, that's funny. Nito says uh, some of the funniest videos I ever watched is men dealing with labor pains. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Girls are far tougher than boys are. Yeah. Look at all those welcomes. Yeah. There's, and there's a couple medical professionals in there, too. Yeah. Um, Jessica, yeah. so you know that are welcoming you. Yeah. So anyway, I'm looking forward to. I don't know where the conversation will go. We're and gonna, you don't know when it's going to happen. No, we just need to schedule it. Um, I've got the stuff I need to do for researching it. So Jessica and I just need to schedule it. That's all. But she has my cell phone. I have hers. We'll we'll get it figured out here pretty quick. Uh, oh wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Wait. That's a different link. I went looking for it. I'll make sure to get the right one. All right, cool. I'm just going to let this roll here for a little bit. But thank you, Jules. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, Combat Midwife, I think I hope you enjoyed us talking tonight. And, you know, this is a very community environment and we chit chat a lot. We do this every single Friday. I try to cover, you know, the topics that goes on in the world. But um, well, look at that. One more rock says, uh, welcome, Combat Midwife. I just subscribed to your channel. Yeah. How cool is that? Oh, yeah. So much fun. It is a lot of fun. And we're going to keep doing it. Um, we're going to do it every Friday. But you and I will get on a lot. Well, and B. Because I ain't doing it without B. Just saying. I'm just not. Well, you. Yeah, this would be bad. That would all be bad. But um, we'll get it on the schedule coming up here pretty quick. And uh, we'll get it all done. But before we go, Miss B. Right. Does anything even matter anymore? You got any parting words for us? Does anything even matter? Um, yeah, I, uh, I wanted to, um, say to, uh, invest in our relationships. Mm. Um, you know, there's gotta be more to it than just the grind and, um, love each other hard. Oh, yeah. I love how he said that that way. I'm putting that link back up there so everybody wants to see it. I thought that she said that that wasn't the right one. Oh, she said it was the right one, but there's the okay. website. There's the website. Do you keep going? I'm sorry. No, that's 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 it. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, without our relationships, we are alone and doing it by ourselves. So mm-hmm. we have to take the time to invest in each other 
and allow others to help allow <laughs> those blessings and to love hard because we don't know. We don't, none of us know what, what our time is here. And if we do what we can while we're here, then our time here is spent the way it's supposed to be intentional and um, with each other. Yeah. How amazing. Um, I think I'm going to leave. I've, I'm going to bring up a slide here. You guys well, real quick though. Life with Mike and Jen combat midwife. They're asking you if we could really use a baby birthing kit available for the community to purchase something to think about. Right. Um, I'm going to leave you with this thought from, from uh, Leo Rossner, which said, I cannot believe that the purpose of life is to be happy. I think the purpose of life is to be useful, to be responsible, to be compassionate. It is above all to matter, to count and to stand for something to have made some difference that you lived at all. Right. right. And I think that last sentence to have made some difference that you have lived at all is really the point of all of this. We all are born and we all die. And what difference do we make along the way? And I promise you guys, we're not going to make any difference just playing their game. We're not going to make any difference just being that soldier, just being that trooper that just goes to work every single day, pays their taxes, comes home, is happy because we get a new TV every other year or maybe a new washing machine. You know, there's got to be more to life than that. And I challenge you guys to go find that. I found it in community and I think you guys can find it too. So invest in each other, invest in your families and love them hard. Tag out. See you out. See you guys. Have a great night.